It's time to set the stage for day two. And we are starting off just like we did yesterday with three star after three star one. And yes! it's a triple! He is pumped up. Let's go, Dip <laughs> Matang. They will be moving on. Jijin is in a beautiful position. Oh, just when they needed it the most, Eve Check comes in. The Yak is going to clutch what? this three star. JX Tiger, congratulations, and you're continuing in the upper bracket. It is going to be close against any one of these teams you have to face off against. Gaku, and he is coming away with that first three star of this war. This huh. is saying life was incredible. Walkers is going to move on in that upper bracket. It really will come down to who can hold their nerve. He's already, he's already <laughs> celebrating. He knows already. Like, yeah, it looks incredible. 
incredible with the Royal Champion ability. Look at all of the spells it's in. Tribe Gaming bringing it home and making sure that they move into tomorrow's matches. This is looking really good for Garakuta. There we go. Yeah, there's no trap. The oh. minions, and he's celebrating already. Moving forward, we know Aphelion is looking incredible strong. And, well, Bedzinger is now completely tying things up. Fantastic to make sure that the Super Bowlers survived the Giga Poison. You've got the three star, and Bad Singer will move on to tomorrow's matches. This is it. The Clash of Clans 2021 World Championship will be decided today. I'm your host, Woody, and so pleased to bring you some more Clash in action with the final four teams in competition for the crown. After a year of hard-earned battling, we are finally going to see this big battle come to an end. I'm also be pleased to be joined today by Clash of Clans community manager Darian from Supercell, and we're also going to have a special segment today with Eric. He's going to be joining Lady B for a special Clash Me Anything segment. So please, right now, make sure to put your votes and questions down in the chat, who you think is going to win and what you want to ask Eric. Uh, he is going to be here with some great wisdom to share with all of you. But uh, for now, I want to go ahead and talk about where we are at in the action. Yesterday, we saw three more clans eliminated. Let's say their names now, honor them and say goodbye. They were Tompanai Empire, Vatang, and Aphelion Esports. With those three eliminated, we still have four clans left in the competition. The top four, two undefeated teams in the upper bracket, the Queen Walkers and JX Tiger. Two more teams in the bottom bracket, down but not yet out. Tribe Gaming and Badzinger. These four teams are competing for this year's million dollar prize pool, most of which will be awarded today. Our first place team will go home with a cool quarter million dollars. Our finalist scores $150,000. The bronze team picks up $100,000 and our semifinalist will take 75K away. We are so pleased to be broadcasting these matches here on the Clash of Clans Esports channel, but there are also dozens of co-casters from around the world bringing you this action in a plethora of languages. Big thanks to all of them for the hard work that they've put in over the course of this year. But we are now ready to get into the action. Guys, Judo and Itsu, take us through yesterday's matches. We had some big upsets. Everything continues today. Firstly, we had JX Tiger beating Tribe Gaming, who did get a perfect war over alternate attacks. The Queen Walkers also won the battle of the Japanese clans. And unfortunately, Athelion Esports then ended up getting knocked out of the competition by Bad Zinger, whilst Tribe Gaming won their matchup in the lower bracket. And out of all all of the teams remaining, they are the only clan to have got a perfect war, and they've had two of them, Itsu. That's right, and we're starting the day with the upper bracket match between Queen Walkers and JX Tiger. This is going to be a crazy matchup, followed by the lower bracket match, then in between of Bad Zinger versus Tribe Gaming. So a lot of action ahead. I cannot wait to get started, Woody. Only four or five matches separate us now from deciding who will take that crown. We definitely want to check in with our folks at home, though, and ask them, who do you think will win it all among the four clans out there? How do they vote, Judo? They just need to put the hashtag in the chat. Hashtag QW if you think it's Queen Walkers. Hashtag JX for JX Tiger. Hashtag BAD for Badzinger. And hashtag TG for Tribe Gaming. Thanks very much, Judo. That's going to be it for the top of the show. We are ready to get into the battle right now. Let's go ahead and send it off to our first pair of casters. Lady B and Carbon Fin, take it away.
Thank you so much, Woody. It is now the final day, day number three here in the 2021 Clash of Clans World Championship. It is time to be crowning a new champion, and we'll have to see alternate attacks got knocked out in day one. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I can't either. You know, and when you see these top place teams, the reigning world champion knocked out. You know that the teams coming in are bringing that stiff competition. This is really anyone's war. We've seen Tom and I even knocked out. So you want to know what? I think Queen Walkers really need to be on guard against JX Tiger, who has certainly been bringing the fire this weekend. Yeah, the storyline with JX Tiger is their defenses. They have been holding strong. Can they keep up with Queen Walkers. Queen Walkers didn't put up a 14 star. They won 13 to 12. So their defenses were really strong against the Fillion as well. So now it's going to be the question JX Tiger, will they be able to hold Queen Walkers from attackers like Gaku, Stadra? We have Klaus, Stars, and then we have the last attacker who loves to come in with all the pressure. We talked with him yesterday to end the show, Yuda. 14, who is the captain of the Queen Walkers. They were the runners up from last season or last year against alternate attacks and they are definitely the favorites now to take it. They definitely are. I think everyone has their eye on them, as does JX Tiger, to try and overtake them in this upper bracket match. But uh, Queen Walkers really has been looking very, very solid. And you mentioned JX Tiger being that, off, uh, that defensive team here. Queen Walkers is notorious for coming in, pulling yes. in those big star counts. And that is what we expect to see today. We are indeed going to have to take a look at the percentages and the stars as well. But for Queen Walkers, they've been holding really strong, but they were bringing in those box bases previously, and those really stumped some of the opponents to stop them in their tracks because the Queen Walkers are made up of a lot of Legend League players, including Gaku, who loves to usually go first. So that's where you get the experience of Legends League when you can't prep, you can't plan, you just got to go in with it. And that's what these wars are. You have just a few minutes to actually plan your attack and then you have to do it in the competitive scene with so much pressure on the line. Yeah, and you know, JX Tiger, they have been, I want to say the dark horse uh, throughout this series so far. So Queen Walkers might take a different approach, different strategy with them because they know that this team is not necessarily shown in many of the community leagues that they're yeah. playing in. Yeah, Queen Walkers are probably the team that's shown the most amongst all of the streamers that are covering, especially this war. We have our eyes on all of these players coming in with their coveted attacks. We know Stadra, he loves to attack usually first in the wars, tends to typically come with those P.E.K.K.A. smashes. And then Yuda14 always attacks last. He's never once attacked other than fifth. He always does it. They stick with their typical lineup. We'll have to see what they want to do here. But JX Tiger, they're going to be bringing it. They know the pressure. They are coming as huge underdogs. I wonder what the community is voting, what they think. I'm sure majority are probably picking Queen Walkers to take it all. I think the majority would, and deservedly so, knowing that we do have the Vice World Champions here and looking to claim that title. And as they're here, yeah. set, ready to go, it looks like they are focused. They are indeed. They are have all sitting right next to each other. And that's the beautiful thing is when you're in the same room to play, you're able then to talk right next to each other. You don't have to be worried about over voice. And then you can help spot your teammates, which makes a huge huge difference, especially being able to see from their perspective, because when you're watching from inside the war, every Clash of Clans player knows there's a little bit of a delay. So you have to be predicting exactly what's about to happen in the attack so you can tell that player who's attacking to be ready for something that's about to come. Yeah, and that reminds me of the 2019 World Championships yes. where we had the players live on the stage having that beautiful environment and seeing Maxi over yes. the, his teammates. <laughs> 
shoulders. You know, that's the kind of environment that we're seeing a lot of the players working with today. They might not be here with the studio in the studio with us, yeah. but they are working together and we get to see them working together live, seeing their excitement and reactions throughout. Yeah, it's incredible to be able to get that. Usually when you're at home, you're away from your teammates. It's really hard to get into that atmosphere. If they win, you know they will be cheering. They could be jumping up and down. Just so much excitement. And I know all the viewers at home cannot wait for this first war because this war, we've got Queen Walkers and JX Tiger. Remember, it's double elimination. So if you're just tuning in and wondering, well, what happens to the team that loses? They're going to go down to the lower bracket and they will still have another opportunity to try to make it to the finals because in the lower bracket will be Tribe Gaming and Bazinger. But let's kick this one off with the first attack coming in from Vic of JX Tiger. We got ourselves the P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Notice the base. It does have the Inferno Towers right kind of in a line with the Eagle Artillery all the way to the top side. We're taking a Siege Barracks, so this could We've seen it before, result in a one star. We've only seen one one star so far in the World Championship. Yeah, and that was a game changer in the matchup, really helping Badzinger. I don't know that we'll see this today. Not that I want to jinx it here, but I think Vic is a longstanding uh, P.E.K.K.A. Smash player, and we did actually see them in the world's warm-ups providing us with some new content with the P.E.K.K.A. Smashes earlier this year. Beautiful push coming in. We see the Loons actually taking the lead here for those healers. We want to pick up some of the traps along the way, but they can also take down the defenses. Absolutely. Now just luring out the CC of the Rocket Loons. The Warden ability goes off and protects a bunch of the troops right through the middle of this base, pushing it towards the Town Hall on the backside. The jump should give him access towards the Town Hall. Not going to go into the multi, but the P.E.K.K.A.s are ignoring. Oh, no, they do come back around to the jump. The Rage is continuing this up, and luckily these healers are under the Rage. They're going to keep these P.E.K.K.A.s full health as now the Hog Riders are coming over to make their way to the multi-target in front of with the Town Hall just going down. Those Hog Riders protecting the Royal Champion who's able to hold on to the ability. Typically, you want this approach when you have some heavy hitting items on the back end, but there are none here. Wow. No scatter shots, no single targeting Infernos. This is looking absolutely wiped out as Vic continues to concentrate and make sure that this is a done deal. It is indeed a done deal. Let's go again. Some love in the chat for Vic and some three stars hype indeed. What a way to kick off the first attack in day number three with the pressure on the line here, Lady B. Oh, pressure does not seem to be getting to Vic. Having, you know, having the first lead attack yeah. <laughs> here in a very important matchup because with this upper bracket match, you get a huge advantage going into the final spot. Absolutely. If, if you win your finals, you're going to be in a good position to actually not have to force into another war yeah like the, like you said you win from the upper bracket the winner of this goes to the finals match no matter what the worst they can do if they win this will be second place because they'll be waiting there they have to lose two times in a row in order in the grand final match not to get that championship trophy which you see right behind us right here they are all chasing after that because alternate attacks has been knocked out a new champion will be crowned this year and that's the amazing thing about the competitive scene in clash of clans it can go at any point if you have one really down war that can make everything and you will be knocked out as we've seen it yeah, and this, uh, this is definitely something that Queen Walkers is looking to finally take advantage of. Having wound up in second place to ATN, this is their opportunity to shine yeah. and pick up that first place this year in the World Championships. Stadra, as you called it, kicking off in that first place position yes. and doing what he does so well, the Super P.E.K.K.A. Smash. He is a resident ground attacker and kicking this one off with a Warden to start setting up the funnel. Well, I got some awesome stats for all the stats lovers out there in chat. Out of the last 94 attacks that Stadra has done, 81 of them has been with the P.E.K.K.A. Smash. He loves this attack strategy, and he does it so well. So as a base builder, if you're JX Tiger, you know at least one of your bases is guaranteed, basically, to be hit with the P.E.K.K.A. Smash. 
And uh, I think he's got a pretty good hit rate with it as well. So you're guaranteed to see uh, that three star head to head matchup from the start. Let's see if he can do it though, or if JX Tiger has found a way to defend Stadra. So we come in with the Pekkas, with those Super Wizards behind. We need to see the healers transferring over to the Pekka stat, but we do at least have the goal in providing some additional tank early through. Yeah, with that tanking, trying to continue this push, the Warden ability going off, really wanting to protect those Pekkas. That's the key with this, this attack strategy. If you keep your Pekkas alive, you'll be able to keep the Super Wizards behind them alive, since they will be the ones that are tanking for in front. Now with that King ability going off, we have taken out the Eagle Artillery, so we don't have to worry about that hitting our troops as he continues to move through. But the problem is, this Queen, she should make her way to the Town Hall after this multi-target Inferno goes down. We do have some of those Pekkas that did wander off to the right side. Queen the with her ability. Please. Bye, Queen. Oh, she should secure the Town Hall here with her ability no matter what. Okay, so that invisibility spell keeping her alive and well through her ability. A bit unfortunate for the Warden to hog those healers because you want the Queen staying alive. Stadra breathing a sigh of relief, wow. celebrating, knowing Woo. he's got the three star. JX Tiger not able to hold him back in this matchup. So we go in head to head. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. He is excited. Yes, take that <laughs> picture, everybody. Take those screenshots. It is a three star for Stadra of Queen Walkers. The answer indeed. What an amazing attack. He comes in with a P.E.K.K.A. smash. You know he's going to be coming in with that attack strategy, and he still three stars your bases with it. You just can't stop this man. What an answer, and keeping it up in the upper bracket. These teams are going to be trading three stars after three stars. It's going to be a matter of which team makes that one small mistake. I feel this will be the battle of the wills here with yes. these two teams just trying to outshine the other queen walkers still wanting their opportunity in that first place position but jx tiger wanting to come in as those newcomers yes. and really make a statement absolutely jx tiger is definitely capable of doing it we've seen some amazing performances before in just this world championship i would say jx tiger is probably one of the teams that many people may have overlooked coming into this weekend and they are putting on a show and a lot of people are very surprised on how well they have been doing, especially with their bases. Granted, Stadra just did take down their base for a three star, but now we have Ren coming in for his, for JX Tiger with the Lalo. We're taking a look with, it looks to be a Sui Lalo with some skeleton spells. Typically, you tend to see that being used wherever the Queen or Royal Champion is located. We have this king pushing his way closer towards that enemy queen and the multi-target front all over here. A great split up of the heroes, just adding the extra value of setting up this funnel, giving it a wider berth so we can get narrower pathing for the Lalo portion. Queen does make her way around that ice golem, just providing a little extra tank. But look at the king pushing through. He's actually wrapping his way around, going to come right into the center of the base as a royal champ, though, has to pick off the hound here. She's not taking on any fire, so she can reserve. For Ooh, I say that in the expo. Yeah. We've got on her now, so she's going to have to force through that Ability. Oh, the ability does go off. The invisibility protecting the Royal Champion. But I'm really surprised that he is coming in with the Sui Lalo. He, we can take a look at his hit rate overall, is a 90%. But when he comes in with the Sui Lalo, it's actually his lowest hit rate overall in all the attacks that he's done, which is just at 40%. So that is very surprising. So let's see if he can turn that around and turn this into a three star here. Looks like a few of the blues have moved off to the left with that Stone Slammer coming in on the top side, gonna help take out the scatter shot, move through here. There's a freeze right in the middle, but get ready for a bunch of red air bombs right into the core. Yeah, that's exactly what we expect. What I do like is the drop of the Skelly spells here just to distract the beams from that multi-targeting Inferno. Rages up those loots there in the traps, but the warden timing of that tome yes. lifts them through safe and sound. Does indeed, and look at that. It's a single target Inferno over on the far left side. That Stone Slammer is still up, has yet to pop, and it looks like he's gonna be getting a three star again. For JX Tiger, down goes Stadra's base, and he does convert, adding a three star to the board. Single target Inferno is going down, has two balloons for cleanup, doesn't really need them, and beautiful job for Ren. What a great hit.
Again, little celebratory hype in there. This is awesome to see. I can't get over the fact that we get to see the players, their excitement, and just watching them through these. It's it's very interesting to see how calm they can seem during these attacks. Absolutely. I would just be sweating so much. It would just be, I don't know what I would do. I would be shaking so much that I could not drop my troops. I'm sure many viewers at home would be as well. You're probably so nervous just sitting right now watching this stream and seeing what's happening. I just couldn't imagine doing what they're doing at this caliber. But I guess if you've been doing for so long, you've put so much time and practiced all these hours, because we talk about the attacking side so much, but we have to highlight the base building as well. These bases have been tested for so many weeks leading up until this world championship. But it seems like these attacks are just wiping them out. I mean, they could try to rerun some bases, move some traps around, but uh, granted, they've probably built probably close to 100 bases maybe to prepare for something like this. Absolutely, but we do have the top players in the world, so it is difficult to try and trip them up. It's that game of a, it's like that game of mousetrap, yes. building the better base, but not when you have these superb attackers. So Gaku now coming in. We have him working along with the Queen Charge Drag Rider. Queen working through towards that multi-targeting Inferno area, but she's actually going to wrap her way down and around to the scatter shot and we do need to be mindful of the pathing of those healers just out of range of the multi. If we're taking a look at this hit rate for Gaku at 83.3 percent that is the highest here on the Queen Walkers in terms of really overall the last several wars even though stars he did go perfect during the qualifiers which was on another level but the thing with these healers Freezes. they're getting hit by this multi-target Inferno can he keep these healers alive? He doesn't have any heal spell for him, but he keeps the free spell so he can try to protect them. Yeah, that first one not covering the Inferno, running it a little bit risky, but wanting to get the bow and the queen within the lineup. Healers are still alive, but the wow. queen needs to go the distance to get to the town hall. Safe and sound, she's already burned through the ability, so this is a sticky situation. It is indeed. Now the queen's making her way to the town hall. We still have that stone slammer to deploy. The dragon right unfortunately she goes off the multi-target Inferno is going to wipe those healers off. And the queen doesn't have her ability. Whoa. There's the invisibility. Queen, no, she can't get the town hall. He does oh. already have the Royal Champion deployed. Blimp. So he has to send the blimp in to secure the town hall. This blimp needs to do the job here. We know these oh, are sneaky no. goblins, but it, it popped early. Oh. It what? opens up. Can this Inferno Drag, the Inferno Drag can't even pick it off. We do have the oh, Royal Champion. Oh my goodness. Wait, the, the percentage board. as well. What? Is this a one star? The queen did not get the town hall. Wow. He can't even believe it as well. The Seeking Air Mites took that Battle Blimp down right away, and the Balloons could not take that Town Hall down. And that is the story of JX Tiger's bases. And this is a one star. I would never have thought I would be seeing Gaku getting a one star in this stage. But hey, the war is not over. But the thing is, JX Tiger with back-to-back -back triples. This is going to put Queen Walkers to four. So JX Tiger up two stars. That is going to be almost impossible to make a comeback just like that. But oh, man, that is unfortunate for Gaku. That is. I mean, if you told me today that we were going to see a one star coming in from Queen Walkers, I would not have believed you. I oh. definitely would not have. Now, we do see some teams coming in with one stars and able to make the recovery. We yeah. have seen that. Not this, you know, in, in this world championship where we are seeing three star after three star. So that is going to be the challenge now for Queen Walkers. But I would say if any team could do it, it would be the Queen Walkers. Absolutely. Queen Walkers would be the team that could make a comeback from a one star. So it's not over. It's not out. But yeah, look at that on the screen. You don't ever expect something like that. Usually these players try to have a backup to their backup plan to make sure that the town hall does go down. But if that's the base building with the Seeking Air Mine stopping the Battle Blimp from taking that town hall, but that's another issue of when you use your Royal Champion early and not as a kind of last resort to take a town hall down, that is what can result. But now JX Tiger 
if they three star, they are just gonna get that much further away from Queen Walker's Blood Sea. Dropping a second balloon once he's waiting to drop these healers onto this queen as he's gonna get closer towards potentially moving his way into the single. It looks like he does wall break a little bit to the right. So the queen steps up in here and then he'll continue his way through and they're gonna come in with the Dragon Riders. Yeah, I mean, you know, these queen charge Dragon Rider attacks can be very unforgiving as we just saw with how you actually have to put out your troops in the various phases. This one a little bit easier because we don't have the multi, but we do need to be mindful of the single targeting Inferno that will start quickly roasting away drops. They freeze to hold it off, and uh, the queen should wow. smooth sailing. What a Coco Loon that pulled all those red air bombs. Yuda 14 was expecting potentially a charge from this area and have the healers be taken out, but that one balloon pulled all of those traps. That was perfect. Now continuing this queen, jumping into the town hall as his royal champion is now joining in with the Dragon Riders over the scatter shot. Yeah, Royal Champ with that Seeking Shield able to make her pass to the Scatter Shot, eliminating the threat of this compartment just. And the Drag Riders with a much safer approach now. Queen with an easy jump into the Town Hall and the ability meets. We will secure that. Definitely a two star on the board here. Let's see if he can push it forward for the three. Well, he's still hanging on to this battle blimp. He wants to be sure that Town Hall does go down because he cannot afford to give a one star back to the Queen Walkers. So he notices the Queen locks out of the Town Hall. It still has her ability, so he is safe to drop that Stone Slammer on the bottom side of the space as it makes its way through. Air defense is going down. The Dragon Rider trying to take out the multi-target Inferno in the core. Can it do it? Yes! Down goes that middle multi, and the Queen is still trying to stay alive through this bottom section. This is putting uh, JX Tiger on the map right now, taking a massive lead over the Queen Walkers. Look at the Stone Slammer go. I wonder if we're actually even going to see if he had any troops inside. Yeah, well, we have about 40 <laughs> seconds left, so the question is about time. We got the Warden that's actually helping clean up, and he is liking this. He is showing off the JX Tiger logo, and we've got the balloons, the Dragon Rider coming out to finish this one off, and he indeed is going to be putting up a third three-star in a row here for JX Tiger over Queen Walkers. Uh, you said it before, not a lot of people had their eye on JX Tiger, yeah. but I will tell you after today, after this weekend, everybody is going to be looking at JX Tiger. Superb defense, and they are coming in hot offensively. They are indeed. Three stars after three stars. And we've talked about their defenses, holding Gaku of Queen Walkers to a one star. So Queen Walkers just need a triple out to have a slightest of chances if they want to make this make this comeback. Basically, not only that, but they're going to have to hope for potentially a one star from JX Tiger as well. But since JX Tiger know this, they're going to probably have that resort. They have to make sure they have something to secure the town hall. Yeah, this is a. Uh, they might need to just see some two stars rolling in defensively for themselves as well and at a pretty low percent i think that 76 percent two star is really going to come back to bite the queen walkers but we have stars up to bat yes this you know this is one of their star hitters and we love to watch him lalo coming in with the zapquake lalo let's see where he's going to to serve well, this up. We've got the 7-1 combo. So I've got my eye over, I would say normally, probably a scatter shot, but the queen and well, the he's only got a the, nice option. Yeah, he's only got the oh, 7. The like, seven. He, he didn't need the earthquake because the 7 is enough to take out the queen and the inferno tower there. Typically, you take the earthquake if you don't want to take all seven lightning spells. So he was able to still get that value. And now it looks like he wants to use sneaky goblins for the town hall. And there, look at this alleyway that's kind of right in the in the middle here, which can be a little awkward. Let's see what he's going to be able to do to get around that. Yeah, that is going to be a tough spot for this Lala. We expect to see all the traps, plus we've got the multi-beams that we do not want to have to contend with. The queen wrapping her way around with the king and the golem to tank here. Want to clear out this entire compartment, though. We've got the opening in the section, and we bring in the log launcher to open up the path, and we could get right there into that central line. Yeah, we only have five sneaky goblins left, though, 
for this push into the town hall. Hopefully he doesn't drop the Sneaky Goblins a little bit too far to the right because there is a Elixir Collector. No, he drops them to the top side into the town hall. There is the Invisibility Spell. Is it going to be enough with a Builder to repair the town hall? He's trying, and yes, the Sneaky Goblins secure it right there as his heroes continue their push over to the right side. Ooh, this is unfortunate. The Log Launcher did not open up the core of the base, but also we have the King splitting away from the Queen, not getting the full value. Royal Champ at least trying to pick off one of those, but we don't have the opening into the wall, and the Queen has easy access working around the side, so this multi is going to stand no heal to try and save them, and we still have to contend with the super minions that did not go down. We have a poison, so needs to drop it and keep them right there in it as the loons path through. Yeah, now the poison spell is hitting these super minions. The red air bomb's doing a massive up. Out there they are. Down goes a handful of these balloons. But can these balloons fly from the left side around towards the middle multi? The queen still has her ability, so that is fantastic. As he continues his push, the Yeti should protect, protect this queen a little bit more, especially with that unicorn. We have just under one minute with one freeze. The balloons find the tornado trap. Oh, this one's going to be close. It is, and the Queen still has our ability, so we want to keep her protected so she can work her way through, get those archers going, beat through the walls quickly, and get that multi taken down. Come on, Queen. You're going to take out these skeletons. No problem here. We got 30 seconds left with a freeze and her ability. We've got ourselves a three star from a stars. That is exactly what they need in order to have the slightest of chances. Uses that freeze, and down it goes. The three star coming in from stars of Queen Walkers, which is going to put them to seven stars overall to the nine for JX Tiger. JX Tiger, three for three. Their defense holding strong, coming in with a fantastic offense as well. And it's really, the storyline has become JX Tiger. Can Queen Walkers hold them with a defense? Yeah, you know, these big teams, these veteran teams have had a target on their back coming yes. into this. So, uh, Queen Walkers, I imagine, cannot be surprised knowing that ATN have been knocked out, knowing that Tomp and I have been knocked out early in the phase, and they're one of the few remaining OGs to stand. Yeah. I mean, we do have Tribe Gaming, of course, but that is a different lineup than what we've seen each year. Absolutely. We'll have to see. We still have the teams in the lower bracket, which is Bazinger and Tribe Gaming. Remember, only the top four teams are remaining here in day number three and we will be crowning a new champion by the end of this stream and cannot wait who it will be. We'll see with Joan of JX Tiger. They are trying to get ever closer to that trophy. We got ourselves a Pegasus match, but we have a Bat Spells in the mix as well. We'll have to keep our eye on where it decides to drop this Ice Golem, which typically may end up being used for potentially a Wizard Tower to help provide a little bit of a distraction as the bats move through. Yeah, so we'll look to see what splash remains. We do have the wizard towers on the back end, but all of those scatter shots, one easy access right towards the outside of the base and the other that's going to cut through the pass. So it'll easily be taken down here. Now we do leave that town hall open, yes. but clearing the path so we can send the blimp in safely. It'll yeah. also help. It'll Ooh. Eagle artillery, yeah. Hit some of these P.E.K.K.A.s. Get ready for the Warden ability. Come on, there we go. Warden, Warden, beautiful. Look at that for the P.E.K.K.A.s. But out comes a triple Ice Golem. Klaus was expecting a P.E.K.K.A. smash, and that is the one CC that you really don't want to find when you do an attack like this, because all his troops get stalled up so much by the freezes of the Ice Golems. Yeah, this is a bit tough, and we can see, look at those healers getting targeted by the multi, which means we'll lose them out on the back end. That scatter shot we do still oh. need to contend with, but we have the bats to come into play. He could potentially bat bomb this. Seeing multi, the RC, she dodged it. She didn't go for it. It was the skeletons that rerouted her to go on the outside. He really relied on that multi dark inferno to go down, but and his world champion to go for that wizard tower. And he decides to now send the bats from the top side, but the eagle artillery is still up and everything has died off. This eagle eventually is going to lock onto these bats and they will die instantly. Let's see, there it is. No, you can't get away from that eagle. It is too late. 
Oh, this is going to hurt Joan. This is the defense that Queen Walkers was hoping to see. Not enough for them, but a good start. A little lead on the freeze as well, as yeah. you can see his frustration, knowing that there's really not a lot that he can do. However, percent, they want to keep up in high. What was it, a 76%? Yeah. One star that came in from stars, and this is going to be Gaku. on the, uh, from Gaku, yeah. and this is going to be on the lower side for them here. We do have a little more value to pick up with the 36 seconds that remain, but but the Eagle is going to continue to fire away, limiting how much he can now get. So all the viewers that are home are wondering, what was the reason that really stopped this? Well, like I mentioned, the triple ice goal. If you expect your opponent to come in with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash style attack, a triple ice goal does a fantastic job at slowing them down and the momentum is to move through the base. And that's exactly what happened here. Because we typically tend to see a lot of times headhunters mixed in with lava hounds or maybe even super minions, especially if you have a clan mate that has it unlocked in order to donate something like that. But still, what a great effort. But that is exactly what Queen Walkers needed. Klaus's base comes in strong to just slowly, maybe, keep that door of opportunity open to see if Queen Walkers can make that comeback. Yeah, would require another defense here, but they are inching their way closer to a potential comeback. And you know what? In a game like this, as the pressure's moving forward, yeah. that could easily happen. We're going to see with that 83% two-star there from Jonah of with a P.E.K.K.A. smash. JX Tiger is like, okay, you know, we got the two-star, even though we started off with three triples. With the one-star of Queen Walkers, they're still feeling really good. Yeah, I'm sure that they're very happy so far with their performances. So many triples coming in on the board. And, of course, All right. the defense says... Now, Klaus, this is a moment we've yeah. all been waiting for. We, who doesn't want <laughs> to see Klaus coming in to the mix? And we do have a log launcher to help force these heroes in. I expect to see a nice deep push into the space. Yeah, I'm looking at this army, and I'm saying we've got ourselves the balloons, we got a golem, we got hogs. Uh, the initial thing that's standing out to me, he's got a bunch of free spells, which means that he really wants to invest like crazy for his heroes. There's the first one, right onto the scatter shot to help protect his king and move his way through. There's ground skeletons, really to protect his royal champion, to distract all of these areas right around the single artillery. Look at this, dropping two hog riders to go in and help pick off that archer tower. Great job. He has these troops to an exact science of dropping them for exactly what they need to take down. Well, this is a bit unfortunate. The log launcher only getting some shallow value, not making it to the multi where he anticipated it to go. This was meant to get deep inside the base, eliminating the damage zone, eliminating any potential risk, not only wow. of the multi, but the traps inside. Yep does have an invisibility, so he's going to use it here for his Royal Champion. So down goes that middle multi-target for him. The Yeti helps. Royal Champion does dodge the core Tessa. More Tessas actually do pop. And we've got ourselves the Lalo coming in from the Town Hall compartment. Moving in, and he's going to have to actually fight through this Sweeper, which is protecting the Town Hall. Can he freeze the Town Hall and the Sweeper together? What a perfect freeze spell. That is so difficult to do. Absolutely stunning. Wow. So we have the Loons pushing through, clips those loons through the Warden Tome and gets them pushed Whoa. along, reached up, and look coming at, in for the multi. Look at that Trineo Trap, and it actually helped Klaus. The Trineo Trap pulled the balloons off away from that Town Hall poison. So, wow, got a little bit lucky there. So now these balloons are continuing their path right around, but the scatter shot is up, and they're all grouped together. And the pathing path is not looking ideal. We do have a single target in front of him. He's got one balloon left. And no, Klaus looks frustrated. Down goes the balloons. And we got another defense from JX Tiger. This is not what Queen Walkers was hoping for. This is not what they needed no. in this critical moment that they need to force along the three stars to help carry through the one star defense that came in for JX Tiger. This is just continuing to support the fact that JX Tiger really is one of the strongest defensive teams this weekend. Yeah, JX Tiger is flying under the radar, but now teams are taking note of what they have been doing in this World Championship. 
and unfortunate, only an 85% two star there for Klaus, and they're going to be pushing it up to closer towards a nine stars. And I mean, with JX Tiger being closer to the 11, they're looking to put up another three star. They put up 14 in this war here, but unbelievable what we're seeing here today. Just that three star for Klaus did not connect. He was coming in with some amazing attacks the previous two days. But that's, this is the upper bracket. You lose this match, you still have an opportunity in the lower bracket, but you're gonna have to take out, at this point, JX Tiger two times in a row to try to be crowned the 2021 World Champion. I feel like JX Tiger has definitely been saving some of their best bases for this potential yes. matchup here, knowing that this would be their biggest opponent taking down the Vice World Champions. Yeah. The Queen Walkers is a huge task, but it's not over yet. It no. is not in any way, shape over yet because we've seen a couple of one stars now so far. Queen Walkers just hoping that they can try and get in on that groove. Yeah, with a two star, that will secure it. That will put them up to a 13 star performance and the best Queen Walkers can get is going to be that 12. So we're gonna see him at least be able to secure this town hall, but it looks like he's got a bunch of sneaky goblins. So he's not gonna wanna break this queen into the town hall. He just wants this queen to walk her way up and around, maybe charging into the scatter shot and having the sneaky goblins go for the town hall. Absolutely, and I suspect, knowing that we don't have that many loons coming in, we're really going to try and support this one, um, but it is going to be quite a big hero push spread yeah. across. Yeah, we have to see this queen, how much value she's going to get, where is she going to go? The Tesla did pop, so it might pull this queen in a little bit. Hold on, okay, we do still have those buildings on the top side. Ooh. The super wall breaker failed there. Oh, so we have one more to come in for yep. that scatter shot compartment, but we right. still need to enter way. And I mean, we have the we, we have the sneaky goblins to take that out. We have a blimp in the mix here as well, and I'm curious yeah. if that's going to come in from a corner area to help take on the scatter shot, um, you know, and work this along so we can push the heroes a little bit deeper through. Absolutely, he's waiting. Oh, the, oh I was going to say the minion was that going to run over to the town hall, but the Tesla was right there. Town hall now activates. Is it going to be in range of these healers? All the sneaky goblins are going. Going in, there's the invis, and they should secure the town hall here. Brilliant job getting that value. Now here comes the king. He's moving his way. Well, actually, we've got the warden on ground with the king to help assist for the eagle artillery as he is continuing this path around. And that's because we we only have eight loons to actually help this through. This is yeah. relying solely on the heroes. These kind of attacks are actually very risky, but this shows how comfortable JX Tiger is in the position having that one star defense. But look at this so far, just forcing that queen ability, just forcing the king ability, and he still has a grand warden tome as he makes his way towards the six o'clock compartment where the blimp oh. is gonna clear it out. Wow, the blimp coming in late, gonna move in. The blimp pops and damages and takes out that Archer Tower. We've already seen he surpassed the two star, which means no matter what, JX Tiger will be advancing to the grand finals. And we will be awaiting who is going to try to beat them two times in a row. Or JX Tiger, you win one more war after this, you're the new world champions. Yeah. JX Tiger doing something <laughs> that I think many people did not expect here, taking down the Queen Walkers. And you want to know what? They're doing it in style, yes. putting up that three star. JX Tiger is going to finish off here with a stunning performance 14 stars yeah. on the board against the Queen Walkers. Not many teams can say they've done that. <laughs> no, not as indeed. We have Yuta 14 who's going to be the final attacker for Queen Walkers. But now the real question comes, if you're Budzinger or Tribe Gaming, is this something that they really wanted to happen? Meaning that you would have to take on Queen Walkers in the lower bracket. All you would have to do is defeat them once. Because if they made it to the grand finals, you would have to beat the Queen Walkers two times in a row, which is, I would think is almost impossible to do. But JX Tiger is doing a phenomenal job. And I mean, Queen Walkers, JX Tiger, either one of them is going to be an absolute unit down in the lower bracket which looks like Queen Walkers now will be down there awaiting the winner of Bazinger and Tribe Gaming.
I, I don't think anybody would want to face Queen Walkers in any <laughs> of these matchups. Oh. So this is going to be an interesting one for our lower bracket winner later today. So Yuda, he knows he's in a position that he really can't change much, but I think we need to see the triple. I yes. think we need to see that their heads are still in it and they're ready to fight back in that lower bracket. Yeah, that lower bracket, the biggest question is, can your team put the performance, put this in the back of your mind, and then focus on the next war? We've seen a lot of teams, once they lose, and they completely fall apart, and they lose it. You have a second chance. You have another opportunity in the lower bracket. One team, no matter what, will make it to the finals to have to take on Jake's Tiger. And if Queen Walkers are believing in that they can do it, they will pull through. But there's still so many wars to go. I cannot wait for the rest of today. Oh, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, we're going to see some more incredible action. Now, as we have the Queen charging her way along, we still have three more super wall breakers, one of which can use the king, be used for the King yes. to work through into this multi-compartment, uh, giving the Queen the allowance there straight in towards uh, the scatter shot we're actually going to hit. But I think he would love to see her wow. in the multi-compartment. Look at that super wall break going all the way to the middle of the base, opening it up for this queen. He knows exactly the pathing of where his wall breakers will go and just gets phenomenal value. Now that poison spell onto the super minions, that queen is taking a massive amount of damage, forced her ability, rages her up yet again. And unfortunately, he doesn't have her ability for later in the raid here. Yeah, but he finally force, uh, brings in the Royal Champion to take on that scatter shot, which redirects the pathing of the Queen to work through into the multi. There is quite a bit of damage with the two Expos on her. So, freezes one of wow. those up to help the Ludes, actually, for the Town Hall, which also helps the Queen yeah. for the Expo, which is perfect and carries her through full health to meet up with the defending AQ. And he makes her invisible, so the Queen can take out the enemy. Queen pops that ward ability as the balloons do split. He does have a haste his going to shoot them out of the town hall. Not just yet, the Royal Champions making her way. She does still have her ability. And we got a three star from Yuta, 14. So this is a fantastic way to end the war, meaning with a three star, right? So they know, and Yuta is the captain. He's the team captain. He's coming in with the three star so he can help rally his clanmates. That's the biggest thing. Will they be able to push this behind them and now focus on the next war, Lady B? Yeah, you know, this is not what they were expecting coming into this match. The one star, of course, the biggest blow to them. But Yuta carrying it through to the end, showing that the Queen Walkers are going to keep their heads in it. They're going to stay focused for the next match. But we've got yes. JX Tiger taking the win wow. and will move forward into the upper bracket later today. They are going to the grand finals. So the worst case scenario is JX Tiger. All they could do is finish in second place, which is a cool $150,000. So they have locked that up no matter what. If you went first, you're taking home $250,000, which is absolutely wild. And that is the beautiful thing about this eSports competitive scene for Clash of Clans. It's a million dollar prize pool over the whole year today alone. We're, or this tournament, this weekend, is $700,000. Congratulations to JX Tiger. They're going to the upper bracket into the grand finals match. We still have more matches to come. The next one is going to be Bedzinger taking on Tribe Gaming, and then the winner of that match will be facing the Queen Walkers. Yeah, and going into that match, you know, Tribe Gaming is going to have to be very, very careful. Badzinger came in yesterday with a one-star yes. defense, which I think threw everyone for a <laughs> loop, and that was huge for them, carrying them through into today's uh, lower bracket for one final chance yeah. to get themselves I within mean, this. Uh, you, if Gaku takes a look at this and he notices, well, yes, he got a one-star, but if he actually turned that into a two-star, they still would have lost this war, right? So does that help with the mental game? Meaning that if he was able to push the two-star, you still would have lost 14 to 13? I mean, at the end of the day, a one-star still is devastating. It really hurts, really, that momentum. But we're going to see what Queen Walkers can do. I know everyone at home is going to be keeping their eye on him, but JX Tiger coming in as a huge under 
underdog in this. I would say many people have almost written them off and they have proved why they deserve to be here and now are in the grand finals. But, you know, we now need to break down these attacks. So let's go and break these down at the Telestrator. Thank you, Carbon. The predictions continue to be blown out of the water. And this is one of the reasons why JX Tiger bringing totally new strategies to the board. So as we go ahead and play this final attack by Mock, I want to break down exactly what happened here because I think he approached this base very wisely. Notice how the Archer Queen has already taken out a lot of the defenses and buildings in front of the town hall meaning he will have a straight shot to it. But he does not decide to send the Archer Queen to the Town Hall with the Queen Charge, which is what we typically see. He decides to send the Queen into the compartment next to this. And you will see exactly why that is important in a moment. Just taking down the Clan Castle troops whilst he's out of range of many of the defenses. Did get a little bit unfortunate on wall breaks, but check this out. As the Archer Queen walks into one compartment, he's actually going to send sneaky goblins through that wall, which is now open, in towards the town hall, meaning that the Giga Poison is not going to impact his Archer Queen. He doesn't have to worry about it. He's getting huge value, just that one invisibility to help with the goblins. Whilst this is all happening, he's got the Golem and the King pushing in from the opposite side. And I mentioned this yesterday, but as the Barbarian King is taking out one compartment, you always want to consider, can you just sideswipe the Royal Champion next to this? Because the King is still tanking, but you don't want to have both of your heroes taking out the same buildings at the same time. You can widen the funnel and everything merges together down to the bottom of the base. Now, he did have the Battle Blimp, should the Sneaky Goblins have failed. We do know that one stars can happen. However, he can stick with the original plan of actually taking down the scatter shot so that is his entry into this bottom area of the base and all in all it really worked out well primarily because he took out the side of the town hall with the sneaky goblins and just gave himself such huge value what do we even call this attack strategy a queen charge with the sneaky goblins into back-end balloons. It wasn't really a Lalo as such, but GG on the attack. However, the bases on defense we obviously seen were huge. Queen Walkers getting that unfortunate one star. And I just want to briefly have a look here at the multi-target Inferno, which really was the bane of Gaku's life. As the Queen Charge came in, the multi-target Inferno is always one of the defenses you do not want reachable from the Archer Queen. So it's just one tile further away. That is sometimes why we see the Grand Warden walk reaching for that. But what it meant was after he missed the initial freeze trying to get the Queen and the multi, it hit the healers. It was a chain effect. He had to start using even more freezers. So that was the one thing about this base. I know it's relatively basic, but it is what I wanted to point out because ultimately it is is what made the difference in the end. Once stars happen, it is unfortunate, and I hope that Gaku and the Queen Walkers can shake this off because they are going to now be fighting down in the lower bracket. But we should check in with what you thought the predictions would be of the entire thing with Woody. Thanks very much, Judo Sloth. JX Tiger have become ungovernable. The only remaining undefeated team in this year's Clash of Clans World Championship. They have now trounced the Queen Walkers, a squad that made it to the finals last year and had a very tough match against alternate attacks. But let's take a look now at where you thought the result would go. And wow, the Queen Walkers with 68% were far and ahead your favorites. Their defeat now and removal from the upper bracket means that this whole game is now up for grabs. JX Tiger in that top spot will still be watching as Badzinger and Tribe Gaming, together with 20% of the vote, have an opportunity to duke it out now for the right to go up against the Queen Walkers. We'll see that match coming up very shortly. Take it away, Lady B and Carbonfin.
Thank you so much, Audi. We're getting ready for the next match in the lower bracket. And what was that was insane percentage. 68% <laughs> of the community at home was saying Queen Walkers will be the champions. Well, they're going to have to work their way from the lower bracket. And only 11% were picking JX Tiger. I know. I think uh, they're, gonna, they're, they're definitely surprised. That was just great seeing it racking up and yes. racking up. So um, Queen Walkers, obviously, this is a huge turnaround. We told you guys at home, yeah. expect the unexpected. That is the theme of this year's World Championship. It really has been anyone's win here, and we are getting to see superb uh, gameplay, superb defenses coming through. And talking about defenses, well, Tribe Gaming is looking to do just that, trying to hold Betzinger to May 13th. 12, that's gonna be very difficult to do. But we got that team captain, Eve Maxi, followed by Nebrex, Exorcist, Kronos, and Eve Check. With Tribe Gaming being in the lower bracket, now this match, if you lose, you are eliminated. You're coming in fourth place, meaning you still take home $75,000 for fourth. And if you come in elite and you move on, you'll take on the Queen Walkers to try to advance to the next round. But their opponents, it's not an easy task. They've been winning in the lower bracket for so long. It's Bedzinger. It is Bedzinger. And we do have Dima, Endy, Avatar, Rikiraz, and Juan. Now, Juan is no stranger to the World Championship circuit, being yeah. one of the world champions in 2019 when he played for Nova. Now with this incredible team, including Rikiraz, really, who is known. I, I think it's undisputable. He is one of the yes. best players in the game right now. But look at that, 98%. Wow. Overall, we see Avatar with the 99% average damage just stepping one level above. So we have an incredible lineup here for Badzinger. And again, yesterday, they held that one-star defense, which Tribe needs to be very cautious of. Indeed. So we were taking a look at those stats. And what do those stats mean again? Well, ND and Juan, if they both three-star, then Badzinger will be doing very well. They are going to be relying on them to come through and really set the tone. But we're looking at the percentages and it looks basically <laughs> identical here. It does, look at that. It's just 2.2% <laughs> separating them in the overall damage and from a, an average star damage, only 0.1 one star yes. difference. That is incredible. But also from the tribe side, we have some seasoned world championship veterans. We mentioned earlier today that this, you know, the tribe team has changed hands. Uh, through each three of the, you know, like each three seasons that they've been in. But Eve Maxi and, of course, Eve Check yep. have been in this lineup. So they've been in this position, but the rest of the team is really handling things well. They are indeed. And now Tribe is starting it off here. Nebrex looking to kick this one off. Let's see what Tribe can do. We know that Tribe did a perfect war in the first round. Then they got knocked down to the lower bracket because of JX Tiger. And then when they were in the lower bracket, they got another perfect war. So Tribe Gaming have gotten two out of the three perfect wars so far here in the World Championship. Let's see if he can get the value here with that blimp landing right in front of the town hall with the blizzard to help chain the town hall. But the problem is he's not chaining defenses behind it here. Yeah, he's not. So. Let's see what he can pick up value-wise, uh, working his way through. We do have the CC lure, which is always nice. When you're bringing in blimps, uh, because you're getting a certain value. This, of course, we want the town hall going down. We want some of the surrounding defenses, which we get the majority of. Air defense on the outside still yes. remains, but an easy pickoff. But the most important thing is pulling this to a nice corner where you're not taking on too much damage to knock it out. Hey, he did drop that poison spell, but it did a little bit of damage to the pups. I wonder if... He could have maybe taken him out without that and could have had that for something else. Either way, this ground expo is unfortunately hitting his queen, but she will hopefully get out of range eventually, or at least the world champion take it down, and she could get healed up. But the king, he's moving his way actually into the eagle artillery as the RC makes her way into that multi. There's Ooh, the freeze. No. 
and he comes back around, so he's not going to go for that eagle. No, the king making a bypass back through the queen, and he's already burnt through his ability, so he is not going to get wow. this done. The eagle is going to stand, and Nebrax is going to have to readjust yeah. his pathing and plan for this Lalo. That queen hangs on to her ability. It's going to be forced by the cannon. Can he take out the enemy queen? That's the question mark. Will he lock on to her? One, a two, and a three. One more shot, yes! The enemy queen just goes down. Oh, gets that down wow. by the skin of his teeth, and now sets in the Lalo Ooh. again, having to worry about the repathing of this, yes. heading over towards the eagle, but it needs to go down. He does not want the continuous fire. Yeah. But the one thing is, we have to reserve this warden ability. We have a scatter shot, but we've got a big spread through the damage zone as well, where we expect, here we go, warden, those traps. Warden, warden, red air Come bombs, up. there's the warden. Here comes the haste. More traps probably going to be expected, but he's dodging that single target inferno. We have 50 seconds left. Five more balloons. He's got the minions. Remember, you need to be putting up the sewer shot. This is the lower bracket. If you lose, you're going home. You cannot afford to fail here. Nebrax, can he start it off with the momentum? He's looking around. He is excited, pumping his fist. And look at e Maxi coming into frame, cheering him on. What a way to start off this war here for Tribe Gaming. Nebrax bringing it in for Tribe Gaming. This three-star is the way they wanted to set the tone oh, of the oh, war. Oh. 16 seconds left, yes. and we've got just a little bit of cleanup left to go. He can now sit back, relax, help the rest of his teammates plan, and try and keep bringing those three stars through. Absolutely. Coming in, setting the tone with a three star is huge. And I'm expecting for Bedzinger, the first attacker is going to be Juan. If he three stars, Bedzinger is going to be looking really good to win their wars. But if he doesn't, then Bedzinger is going to have to be making that mountain of a comeback. Even though being down by one triple, it's going to be a huge challenge to overcome in a world finals like this. It definitely would be. Um, but, you know, I'm curious to see what Badzinger comes in with. Now, I know that we typically see Juan as the starting hitter yes. for their team. And, you know, how would you say, what do you think that relates to as far as pressure goes, especially knowing that the first team came in with the triple? Yeah, the pressure is huge, especially like you mentioned. With Nebrax coming in with that three-star, you have to three-star yourself. We saw Juan start off yesterday. He did triple, and he had at a sign as well, showing his support for the fellow co-casters co in the, the Clash of Clans community. But here we go, indeed. He is the first attacker coming in with that Queen Charge Dragon Rider using this battle blimp. Pro what do we got? Yetis or Sneaky Goblins? He probably likes to go Sneaky Goblins, yes. The reason why taking Sneaky Goblins here is because then you don't have to invest a spell, typically a raid spell, to take out that Town Hall. Yeah, and often we'll see that if the single targeting Inferno is a little bit closer in proximity and it would relate to the pathing that you want to get out of your heroes within it. So not really the case in this one as we have the single targeting Inferno just a little bit further up and will likely be contended with uh, working through. Now the Queen has this beautiful opening. Look, we have this nice long line channel. Yeah. So I'm curious if the King is going to cut in to take on the scatter shot. Yeah, we'll have to see what the Yeti said in the funnel. The Queen can walk her way right on into the multi but Tribe Gaming is known for these channels. You know they've definitely tested Queen Charges down these channels here. So let's see if he can get this value. Queen can't reach this air defense, so he's going to have to... Oh, wait. He Ooh, made that section oh. invisible. Queen steps in for the AD, and she does actually come back to go in for the Gold Sword. So that invisibility spell was fantastic. But is the timing of this headhunter right with a... Oh, Ooh. down it goes. Oh, nicely placed traps. Hold off that headhunter, which means the queen's going to continue taking on uh, quite a bit of fire as soon as she gets in range. Here comes the king to take on the scattershot compartment. We do have the skellies. We've got the Tesla's. We don't have a valve to help this one out. But can he still do it? Because we still have the storages working around. Yeah, that queen is continuing her path straight into that middle multi-dark inferno. This king with the warden ability to protect all this area down here. That queen doesn't look like there's red air bombs. They're seeking air mines to take out these healers as this queen is continuing right down this alley, taking out all of that valley. And there's the jump. Get ready for the Eternal Dome to protect all of these barbarians. Ooh, very nice. That king getting some extra power Ooh. out of this, taking care of the cleanup. Queen right there in the core, defending, taking down the defending AQ. Royal Champion needs to pick off this multi-targeting Inferno. Now, the king was meant to work in 
towards yeah. with the Royal Champion, but he still provided some excellent tank. This is looking fantastic with the Dragon Riders coming in from the right side. That Queen is still alive, does have the Royal Champion ability. She'll be able to help finish off this backside here. We have the King that did just go down RC's ability. Down goes the Cannon, down goes the Arch Tower, but he's got the Queen. He's got the Dragon Riders, but now the question is time. Did he drop these minions a little bit too late? Let's keep our eye on this. Uh-oh. Hang on, 20 seconds. This is a wide spread Wait here. a second. Dragon Riders, the Royal Champion, 12, 10 seconds. No, he, he can't get this. No, too wide of a oh, spread no. of remains. Juan will what? come in with some beautiful percentage, but it will not be enough time for the three-star. This wow. is indeed a time field. 96% two-star, though. Really nice position to be in if you're going to wind up with the two-star. So, you know, Juan's going to be pretty happy about this. Maybe not as happy as he would be with the three-star, but definitely knowing that if they can hold that defense. And Badzinger has had some great defenses, yeah. so they are relying on it this is a good support for them so we see the stat line here a two star from one and since he didn't triple now but zinger they're gonna have to really rely on the other players and it's when he doesn't three star their win rate has dropped drastically so we'll have to see what tribe gaming is gonna do can they keep up the momentum from the other wars they're the only team that has got multiple perfect wars here in the world championship with affiliate esport being the only other team that's gotten one here so what's the next tag maybe eve maxi or if chronos wants to come in he is such a strong attacker he can come in set the tone again so reliant on a stage like this Definitely. Now, ooh, oh, we have Maxi. Eve Maxi coming yes. in. So he was there. He was celebrating earlier with that three star. Now with the pressure on him to try and keep this going because they don't want to give any bit of an opening, any bit of opportunity to Badzinger, knowing that they will quickly take advantage of it. So Maxi opting to go in with the Queen Charge Drag Rider. We know that Tribe Gaming loves this approach. So knowing that Badzinger would likely expect it, let's see if they can find a way to hold strong. Yeah, Eve Maxi out of his last 62 attacks, he's attacked with the Queen Charge Dragon Riders 30 out of them. So almost 50% of the time. So he knows his attack strategy so well. Let's see if he can keep this queen alive through this town hall. Will she be stepping into it, taking quite a bit of damage? Down goes this air expo. Oh my goodness, look at all this damage here. Ooh, lots of damage incoming, but able to continue working through, carrying on that ability, drops the invisibility spell just to keep the defenses off of her. Get those headhunters oh, wrapping single, away. Single, single, single. Oh, crazy. Oh. oh. Wow. Keeping that queen ability intact is huge. Get ready for another invis and or a freeze. A rage needs to keep that queen going. The eagle artillery is now locked down. Can she get to the single, but is requiring to use all these spells in order to do it? Yeah, these freezes will not be available now for the back end of the base, for the scatter shot that remains there. But it's very important to keep your queen alive when you're investing five Ow. healers into the mix. Yeah. Stone Slammer coming in to tank for the initial scatter shot so we can try and delay this warden ability just a little bit later through, especially since we have to get through the defending AQ on that backside. Absolutely, that Archer Queen back there is going to be a huge trap, but these Dragon Riders perfectly timed that warden ability to get all this value. The double sinking air mine right there in the core, surviving all that. The Queen is getting the top side air defense. He is liking this so far. There's the RC ability with the Rage getting right through this enemy Queen as the Dragon Riders are pushing their way towards the scatter shot. The Queen takes out all that value and Eve Max is looking good. The only problem here is again about the time and the cleanup with that core clan castle. He makes them invisible. They're going over to the scatter shot. He is pumping his fist. He is excited and Tribe Gaming is looking to put a second three star on the board here. They are raring to go, going two for two. Maxi knows that he's keeping his team through and through. They want that perfect war. It might be a difficult wow. feat, but for now, oh. they're going to continue to hold that one star lead. Oh, he is sweating. Yeah, <laughs> giving the hearts. Let's, uh, let's go and give the hearts back to Eve Maxi in the chat. If you have the emo, please use it to show the support for any one of these players, especially putting on that performance with all the pressure on the line. Well done.
to Eve Maxi. I mean, Tribe Gaming. I'm not gonna lie. They have what? They probably have the best reactions for <laughs> any webcam out of anyone that you get to watch. They are celebrating. You see the emotion that is on their sleeves. They show it to all the viewers at home, and that is why Tribe Gaming is one of the fan favorites as well. But Bazinger are looking to put a three star. They need to do that if they don't, and if they only get a two star, they're gonna be down by the two triples, which we've seen before is so difficult to try to make a comeback from. Yeah, you know, I feel like Tribe has been the most improved team through the year coming yeah. in. I felt like they had a tough season this year, really adjusting to things, but within the past couple of months, we have seen this big change, and this is why they are dominating so far. Avatar now, though, coming in for Badzinger, he needs to pick up the three-star. He can't give any, um, any big, big value. Dropping down to a two-star only secures potentially Tribe moving forward into the finals. And coming yeah. in with the ooh, this spell. Look at that. Bat. We saw it before, <laughs> and the bat, remember yesterday, he actually made the multi-target invisible, but no! The multi stays up because of the builder repairing it! Oh, how unfortunate to Avatar there, but let's take a deep breath because this exact same thing happened last time. He was unable to take the multi-target Inferno down, but he still was able to overcome it and three-star that base. He was, so we might see lightning striking twice if he can yes. carry through with this one. A really interesting strategy, not something I think I've ever seen <laughs> in the competitive scene so far. But the queen working her way towards the town hall, we've created this beautiful funnel. Look at the king, easy path. We've got some meat to work our way through and no wall breaker needed because we have those corner openings. But this is exactly how you funnel right into them. Yeah, the queen is gonna step her way into the town hall. We do see the uh, skeleton traps popping up in front of the town hall with some tassels. The queen is behind it. Remember, that queen will lure the king right on. Okay, the freeze spell. There we go. So the freeze really stops the king from running past the town hall, going to the enemy queen. So nice job. Did activate the Trinale trap, so that is really nice. But he's got 31 balloons with a lull. That is actually a lot of balloons there. But he does only have actually two Lava Hounds, so he can invest a little bit more balloons as he pushes his way through. But he does have that multi-target Inferno in the core, which did get actually healed back up to full health from that Builder, builder Hut. It did, and I think that's the unfortunate problem here right now. We do have the Stone Slipper that's gonna come in likely for that scattershot position. I think he would wanna provide some good tank, get those loons safe and sound, and not lose out on any, especially because, oh, we have the Eagle firing away on a oh, big pack wow. of them yeah. with the defending RC there. With that Eagle shot onto the balloons, the balloons are not pounding. Okay, a few of them do go to that multi through some red air bombs. Air Skelly's coming up as well, trying to haste his way through. There's the freeze onto the scatter shot. These balloons are looking pretty solid here. We only have a single target Inferno on the back end, but there's that scatter shot gonna go down. That Dragon Rider is tanking. He's moving his way through with 30 seconds left in the raid. I mean, there is no air expo, so he's still pushing his way through. He still might have this, but it's about time. Can he get the push through? The balloons are getting picked off slowly. He's got storages at the top side. That Wait, one make the king pop, invisible. On. Make the king invisible. Why? No, the minis are stuck on him. Oh. oh, but he runs out. The Dragon Rider does take out the Wizard Tower and he's gonna fall short. Yeah, this is not where oh. Badzinger was hoping to be. But again, wow. look at the percentage we're seeing, 95%. Yeah. So we've got 96, 95 coming in from Badzinger. This is not the smiles that we saw yesterday, definitely knowing they're in a tough spot with Tribe and their solid performance so far. Yeah, with back-to-back -back triples from Tribe and then back-to-back -back fails for Badzinger, that is going to be a huge mountain to overcome for Badzinger there. I mean, there was that multi-target Inferno. It did not go down. The balloons had to path their way around it. And unfortunate. We had Recrez try to do the same attack strategy before. He was able to overcome that, but Avatar unfortunately was not able to do that here. So the next attacker for Tribe, maybe I uh, might be guessing, could be Eve Check. They could really be attacking in any order. I know Eve Check really likes to attack around four. He did before really like attack around the fifth position, but they have switched some things up because Exorcist has been a 
an absolutely insane attacker when he comes in to close off these wars. So Tribe is looking to put up another three star and indeed it is Eve Check with his classic, his signature, Super Witches. Yeah, I love seeing these Super Witches. This is very reminiscent of what we saw from Tribe Gaming last year. This was one of their favorite strategies, bringing in the Super Witches, and they were one of the first to do it during the World Championship qualifiers, uh, showing how strong it was in that meta. And they've continued to show that it has a place here in Town Hall 14. Now, beautiful use of the Zap Quake. We start sectioning off a deeper portion of the funnel, giving some shallow value for the Warden to carry through and quickly meet up with the main pack, where time is of the essence here. Yes. That's where we want to see it going. We have just under two and a half minutes left, so that's really critical because Super Witches are so slow. You need to start them as quick as possible with a very early Warden Walk, getting some simple value and then using the Lightning Spell just in front of where the kind of that Warden was going so you can establish that funnel towards the town. It looks like he's doing just that with the Log Launcher opening these walls to the, t to the multi target Inferno all the way in the middle. There's a freeze on the left. For his Royal Champion, the logs are opening towards the Town Hall. He does have a secure kind of a safety jump spell just in case. But you know, these Super Witches are looking nice and healthy and going right into the middle. They certainly are, but the King's struggling quite a bit. And we can see the Teslas, the Skelly Traps. This is why you put these in these compartments with the scatter shots, because it means you won't get the full value yeah. out of the King. But the Royal Champion, with the timing, able to work her way through with that invisibility spell, despite having already used her ability. Yeah, with that Warden Eternal Tome, down goes this Town Hall. I don't know what can stop these Super Witches now. He's even got a little lone minion over on the cannon on the far right side. Beautiful value right there. These Super Witches do step into the Town Hall Poison, so let's see if they can stay alive, which is a little bit annoying. And we have one more Wizard for cleanup. So that Queen is stepping in. She does have her ability. These Super Witches did go down, so now the question is time. Well, the Queen has to come in from the, the bottom side all the way around, and if he started these Super Witches, about 30 seconds later in the attack, he would only have 20 seconds, so he would more than likely time fail. But let's see, with these archers at the top side, it's going to be close here, Lady B. Oh, it is going to be close. Very nice awareness from the team, the positions oh, of the smiling. cleanup. Minions coming oh. through. Look, he's got the archers up here. Does, he knew. Does. This was great. These are where spotters wow. come in. He, Eve check knowing they are going to bring oh. home the third three-star here, Garvin. He is smiling. And the thumbs up, and he is super happy. Tribe with the three triples to start off this war. Eve check, well done. What a great effort coming in and putting another three star on the board. Let's go and show the support in chat for all the viewers at home. Put the three stars, put the thumbs up, put <laughs> the hearts as well. Coming away with the three star. And now Benzinger at this, they have to triple out just to get three triples and tie Tribe on the triple count. Yeah, this is a tough spot because they're coming in with a, I can't say huge disadvantage because of the yeah. percentage, but a disadvantage nonetheless going into the back end of this. They still have their third hit to come through, so they need to pick up the three star and hope that their final two defenses can hold strong. And with the 95 and 96% two star that they have, it does put them, if they're able to hold the defenses, in a pretty solid position. Absolutely. They're going to be really strong tribe giving right now in this war, it is the lower bracket. You win this match, you're taking on the Queen Walkers. And I mean, at that point, it's just a best of one. The winner of that goes to the Grand Finals to take on JX Tiger. But now, Dima coming in with Super Bolas. He's done it before. They, We've seen a few Super Bolas, not too many here in the World Championship. Where it's really about the value that you can get from the skip. We're noticing this base has quite a bit of space, or this base has a lot of space between these defenses. So there could be really giant bombs placed anywhere. So you have to be really careful of where these Super Bowlers are moving into. And this is going to be critical where he uses that Warden ability. And I was suspect 
wanting to use it a little bit further through into the core, but we do have the heroes that we have to contend with as well. Now we talk about these warden walks. Look at that long range. We can pick up a lot of value out of it. It is slow moving, but it can reach over those walls where you want to go. I would love to see this eagle go down, but this means that we need to invest the time to yeah. pick it off. So it drops the rage, not for the warden to keep him healthy, but just wow. to speed this up. So we're noticing the time. There is two minutes left. So that took the whole one minute in order before we drop the Super Wizards, or the Super Bowlers and some Super Wizards here, actually. And if we think back to the last deck where Eve Jack, he started the Super Witches with just about two minutes and 30 seconds. So he really did a very quick Warden Walk. So let's see if time is going to be an issue here for Dima. With that jump, giving him access to the core, but he wants that Battle Blip to go all the way to the Town Hall and take that down with the Warden Internal Tome. He's waiting as long as possible. And there we go. Get ready for a Rage right over the Town Hall. And the Tornado Trap spinning it around shouldn't be too big of a problem as he should be able to secure that. Beautiful timing on that Warden ability, keeping the healer safe there as well as they work their way through. A little bit of damage coming in, but one takes one for the team as the remainder stay back and behind. The King has buried his way through the northern side of the base, still with the ability that he just pops, supporting the Queen, and he's going to rip through those walls, giving her a fighting chance on the outside of the base. But this Royal Champ has a lot of work to do with those Super Bowlers that are now down for the count. Yeah, that Royal Champion does have her ability still with one free spell left, but these ground skeletons are really putting a number on this RC, but luckily the healer is there to try to slowly heal this back up with only 48 seconds. Queen's got her ability. Let's get ready for the RC. Let's see, should skip through the Archer Tower, damage the cannon, the other Archer Tower as well. But there's the freeze, was just a bit too late. Now the Warden, he's actually doing a little solo walk over onto this bottom side. Notice, he put the Unicorn onto that Warden, which is actually helping with the additional of the healer right there. So let's see if this Queen can make her way through. But we got only 20 seconds left. We only have 20 seconds left, but she has uh -oh. her ability. We'll have the Archers coming through, and that Expo is very queen, low queen, health right queen. now. It is. She can reach it with the Warden. We've got, got Dima it. coming in with the three-star that Badzinger needed to try and stay in the game. Yes, Badzinger needed that triple. Well done to Dima. And we just talked about the beginning of that attack that he used one minute of a wooden walk and then went in with a super bowler. So he was still able to get the three star just barely. That was close at the end there. Well done. Now Tribe, they're still looking to put the pressure. They're looking to come in with another triple. They do, they can walk away with another two and they could take this war here. But Dima with that super bowler smash, it's all about that war and walk and getting that proper value. Yeah, and you know, we're seeing a lot of this coming from Tribe with those skellies, and in general, yeah. those skellies along the outside edge, edge of the base. We saw that yesterday, one of the breakdowns that we did with the Scattershot, with the Splash Damage, we can actually defend against openers with the Kings. We've yeah. seen those being stalled up, but even we're seeing it now with the Smashes and the Super Witches trying to stall it. Not the case for Tribe Gaming here, but you can see how that easily came down to a possible time fail. Now, Krona's coming into this with the Queen Charge, Lalo. He looks very focused and ready to go. He is indeed. Kronos, one of the solid, one of the best attackers in Tribe Gaming at the moment. We've got ourselves 12 more Sneakies. So Avatar really making this town all exposed to the top side. So let's see how Kronos is going to take care of that with two invisibilities. The Queen, what? She's down so low of health here, but able to keep her alive. There's the Rage. Headhunter's coming out. Poison spell is down, including that King. But let's see if maybe we can zoom out right now because the Town Hall is being hit with these Sneaky Goblins. Yes, very nice. So we can keep our eye on if he sends the rest of the Sneakies for the Town Hall. Looks like he's able to angle in there. But look at that. He's multitasking, taking, using the Queen, trying to keep her alive, and then sending the Sneaky Goblins for the Town Hall. This is going to be a tricky position because he has to now send in and commit to this position that he's coming in on. Gets us done. And, I, you know, I almost felt like good oh, be baited. <gasps> One more coming on, in. On, Two on. more. He's got this. Yeah, he's got it. That was close. That was close. That invisibility spell was just missed the town hall or the snakey. So they were, they got picked off a little bit there. 
but he was able to secure it, no problem. Now he's gonna send these, this Lalo really in between through the base. Let's see if he can keep this queen alive as long as these healers don't get targeted by this multi-target Inferno, but the queen can't reach it. So I would imagine eventually they're gonna get within range. Yeah, now let's talk about the core of this base because we've got two multis, we've got two scatters spreading around, but they're in close proximity that you can get great value out of your warden timing. Wow. Plus we'll have the stone sliver coming in to help support possibly from the opposite side. Yeah, now that Royal Champion does have her ability. Stone Slam pops that Warden Turtle Tome with the assistance of the Rage Spell. The Queen is staying alive. This is looking really good for Chrono so far. The Queen getting that value. The Stone Slam moving in. The Royal Champion is still barely alive. And these balloons do find the red air bombs and the tornado trap, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop him. He is going to be smiling. Down goes, and he is happy. Kronos with the three star again for Tribe Gaming. Tribe Gaming is on what? fire today. <laughs> they are rolling through with those three stars. They are working hard to make their way through and not making this an easy task for I mean, Madzinger. <laughs> The storyline is Tribe Gaming goes up against Altern Tax, gets the perfect war. Then they're in the lower bracket, they get another perfect war. And the one time they don't get the perfect war, well, we don't know just yet, they have one more attack to do, is against JX Tiger, who's waiting in <laughs> the finals. So we'll have to see what Axosis can do for Tribe. Can he get another three star and give them their third? perfect here in the world championship because if they win this war they're going to be taking on queen walkers which is going to be the net the match just after this yeah i think they're out for vengeance for getting knocked down here to begin with but if they make it through to face off against queen walkers that is not an easy task yeah JX Tiger, one of the very few teams that can show that they can dominate over the Queen Walkers, which I think took them by surprise for sure. Yeah, absolutely. JX Tiger is the storyline of their defenses. It's been doing so well here in the World Championship, but Andy, he is looking to come in with an answer. He needs to, he doesn't have a choice. He needs the three on Eve Maxi's base. We've got two Ice Hounds with the Dragon Rider coming out of that battle blimp. Down it goes the Eagle. To secure an Eagle that early is fantastic value. But let's see, now with this Queen, her, she is gonna be charging away closer to this town hall. And again, we're seeing the channel of the base that Tribe really loves to use. Yeah, and she's gonna use this open a this open access to work her way through into the multi compartment as the king works for the scatter shot, to, uh, just distracting it, which is huge, very important, especially as the CC gets lured. You want to hold off as much incoming damage for the queen so she can move her way in with the ability reserve, nice and healthy. Yeah, absolutely. With two skeleton spells to use, will he be using it to protect his heroes, or will he be using it for the enemy queen and/or I would say world champion? But she's already been taken out on the right side with that poison is he dropping okay he does drop the skeleton to try to tank and distract that queen makes her invisible as he continues her push closer to the core with that multi-target inferno standing yeah trying to take some of the heat off that from that warden tower which packs a pretty nasty punch because he wants to hold the ability for the multi wow. to ensure it goes down he's got the battle builder he's got the tesla and he needs us going multi, down multi, fast. multi 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 no the middle multi did not go down from his queen. That is what he was looking to take out. There is a tornado trap and a warden ability was too early. Meaning these balloons are gonna get hit by the town all gigabomb. Wait a second, here it goes. Oh, there it is. Those balloons took a massive amount of damage. They're all gone. Done. Oh. Done. That tornado trap keeping them in it with the early warden ability really hurting Endy's chance to turn this into the three star. And if he did bring in the three star, they would have they would have looked to see if they can hold a one star defense, yeah. something to pull them back through this potentially. This is gonna put them to nine stars. Tribe is looking to put up a perfect war. They're at 12. And yes, we know that Benzinger won't be able to make a comeback from that. The enemy queen is even still alive here. 30 seconds left, down goes that final balloon. It just was, it looks to be the end of the road for Bud Zinger. We do have two more attacks still to come. 
but we are getting closer to these epic matches to close us out, which means that Bazinger, we know that Tribe puts up one, two, three stars. No matter what it's going to be, they will be taking this war. So Bazinger will be taking home $75,000. I mean, that is still amazing to take the home that and make it to the world championship stage that all the other teams in the world would love to be in this position. Absolutely. And they should continue to hold their heads high, knowing that they had a superb performance, uh, definitely coming in with not only some solid offense, we've yeah. seen some beautiful plays from them, some creativity as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the Skelly Bat combo. I know it hasn't worked for them, but still really fun to see. Um, but equally, defense is through. That one star definitely will go down in in the books for them so certainly need to be happy with their performance this weekend yeah they have done an amazing job i mean Bitzinger, they took out the defending world champions alternate attacks in the lower bracket yeah tribe took them out in the upper bracket but still unbe uh, unbelievable performance for both these teams but here we go exorcist can you put up another three star he's looking to do it with that queen charge rocket loons <laughs> okay exosis 12 rocket loons here you know he's trying to be a little bit creative let's see what he could do here with that wall wrecker going right through that gold storage and it should be able to safely make it to the town hall we got ourselves a triple ice golem which shouldn't really be a big threat for this queen now, this is an attack strategy, one of few that I will always will say is a risky approach. Now, it is safe for them, but when they plan early on, you know, you have to think, what if you're in the position that you don't get the job done? Now, the approach with this at least secures the town hall early, yep. which we can often see doesn't necessarily work out in, in particular ways that you go about it, but is going for that safe two star, so that makes it a much more viable one for the last attack. But again, they don't want the two-star. No. They want yeah. that three-star. They yep. want to go home with a third triple under their belts. No, a third perfect war. Third, yes, yeah. third perfect war <laughs> under their belts. What? That is still just remarkable. Let's see if they can do that here. The queen making her charge through the king's ability, pulling some ground. Oh, there is the warden ability. Protects the king's barbarians. Beautiful eternal tome to really push through this bottom section. Look at this queen. She is just staying up, and she's going to get insane value right through the middle of that base. Absolutely. What? And the king and the X still working through this one. This is a solid position, but this is what you need to do with the rocket yeah. loots because you send them from the outskirts. With this approach, you need your heroes to essentially gut out the core and use the rocket loons for support, taking advantage of that oh hasted ability. Oh my, what? Look at these. Now these rocket loons are just casually moving their way in from the outside. Exosys is making this look easy. He's just picking this base off left and right and exosist is putting a statement on for tribe gaming and this is gonna be a three-star exosist let's go and get a round of applause for tribe gaming another perfect war here in the world championship of clash of clans for 2021 and they will be advancing to take on the queen walkers that is the face of excitement that is the face what? that we want to see coming in from tribe gaming after such a beautiful performance look at the hype yes. look at how happy they are knowing that they still have an opportunity to fight through but they will have to make it through queen walkers and we still have one more attack to look at we do indeed one more hit requires from benzinger is going to be coming in and really Bitzinger, you guys did a fantastic job throughout this world championship i know it is going to be kind of you're going to be hanging your heads but don't do that they're going to be coming in strong you made it here all the millions of other teams the clans that tried to get here in this position you're still walking home with a bunch of money here today which is unbelievable let's see what they can do to close off this final attack here in the lower bracket for them and he's coming in with an ice hound we've got ourselves a little bit of a zap 
Ice, Alalo, Lat, Ice Hound really is going to be there as an extra free spell for a scatter shot wherever it may be in Inferno Tower as he moves his way through. I'm so happy that we get to finish this off and see Rikiras, one of the top hitters in Clash of Clans, coming through with his final yes. attack. Blimp coming in. Let's see if he can finish it off strong. Despite knowing that they're not able to make it through, you said it. This team has performed superbly. They need to be proud for what they've accomplished. And let's finish off with beautiful Lalo action. Yep, with that invisibility, he probably wants to make force this queen to go to the left side here. We do have the king down on the bottom. He's going to make his way around. We do have some ground skeletons popping. The enemy royal champion is standing there. And let's see, the queen will step up. More skeletons and additional skeletons. So many in this bottom section for Evecheck. Really wanted to stop a hero push into this compartment, but it looks like the king was just able to try to stay alive, get that value as the queen continues her way around to the bottom. Nice use of the baby dragon to actually keep this moving along. King providing excellent support. Will die through this, but this gives the queen all the opportunity to move into that multi-compartment. Now the loons will be clipped in some of the radius, so the queen needs to step up the bat fast, but we are gonna see this warden of uh, tome coming in pretty quickly as we work our way past the defending AQ into the scatter shot. Yeah, with that warden and channel tome, those balloons are moving their way up to the top side's scatter shot. The queen, look at her, still alive with her ability. Incredible stuff, Rikares. How are you keeping this queen alive into the core? Hasting his way up and around to that multi-target inferno. Getting fantastic value, and this is looking so easy. What a way still to close this one out for Zinger. Great job here. They are going to fall short, going to put them at a 12-star performance. But hey, the only team to have even made Tribe giving fail one attack is the team that's waiting in the grand finals, JX Tiger. Yeah, they can't be too <laughs> disappointed in that. Yeah. And this means Drive Gaming gonna be fighting furiously to get some vengeance. Seek out JX Tiger, but yes. they do need to work past the Queen Walkers before that. GG to Tribe Gaming. Well done. They are advancing in the lower bracket to take on Queen Walkers to think that you have Tribe Gaming taking on Queen Walkers here. You would think that this could be a grand finals matchup. But now the question is, which team would you rather be? Would you rather be Tribe Gaming coming off two back-to-back -back perfect wars or Queen Walkers who just lost their last war? Yes, Gaku got that one star. So really Tribe is riding a really big momentum wave right now. They certainly are. Knowing that they have these 15 Star Wars, these perfect wars under yeah. their belt, speaks loads to them. I, you know, I'm going to be interested to see the stat lineup between these two teams because we saw how close this one was. Yeah, incredible stuff. And well, three star, three star, three star, and all three stars for Tribe Gaming in this war. This is their third perfect war here in the World Championship. Can they do it again against the Queen Walkers and keep that going? Man, they have just been, they're coming in as the number eight seed, the lowest team, the last team to get that golden ticket and look what they're doing. They are, they are as, like a step above. It's crazy to think that they were in the lower bracket having three yes. perfect wars, but just shows the incredible strength of all the teams throughout this weekend. But let's take a look at the community predictions, Carbon. Yeah, yeah well, we're going to need your help for Queen Walkers and Tribe Gaming. That's going to be the war that is coming up next. So what do you have to do in the chat? Down below, the sit, type in who you think is going to win. If you think Queen Walkers are going to win, do hashtag QW. If you think Tribe Gaming is going to win, do hashtag TG. And we'll take all of your votes, put them together, and show you what the community thinks who will take this. Remember, it's a best of one here in the lower bracket. You lose, and you're eliminated. Yes, you are. And uh, you'll still walk away with some pretty nice cash. Yes. But you want to keep rising your way. Try and go for that quarter of a million dollar first place prize. So plenty more action to come. But you know what? I think we should actually take a look at a breakdown. Yes. So why don't we hand it over to Itsu? Thank you so much, Lady B. And yeah, I think there's one strategy which is coming to our head immediately 
when we're thinking about tribe gaming and this is Queen Charge Dragon Rider. So let's roll the clip and let's jump it into it and see what exactly they're doing and why they're doing it so good. So they're charging the town hall. This is something which is to be expected. But now take a look at this one sneaky goblin. This sneaky goblin, those are the small things which are doing a huge difference between a good and a really good player. This sneaky goblin was there to trigger any traps. For example, the tornado trap, which could rotate this queen into the town hall, it's gone. It would have been gone, it would have been there, just making sure that those possibilities of baits, of defenses are not having any chance. The next thing is, he is right now facing so much damage, facing the Lava Hound, which is stalling quite a bit, um, those screen charges, and having this Sing Inferno Tower and this Reaper all the time on this Queen, which is forcing so many spells. And I know a lot of people probably would have let that Queen at this point already use her ability or let her even die which is even worse at this point because you really need that ability later on and now those dragon riders are starting on this right side into the motan firmament tower and getting pushed now into this middle part of the base because take a look at that funnel at the bottom side funnel at the top side, and there's the perfect path you know for those dragon riders right in between into the core into the heart of the space to make sure that everything in the core is getting taken down and since we all know traps are typically inside that core. He is going to delay the warden ability just to make sure that those loons are getting in front of those dragon riders and being able to tank everything to make sure that he is getting that three star in this defending queen. Everything is getting raged up and the defending queen is getting taken down like nothing. So overall a really good attack by Max and this is showing how good they are with this strategy. Queen Charge Dragon Riders. Just a fun fact, every like 25% of the attacks of Tribe Gaming are Queen Charge Dragon Riders. So this is the strategy to defend and apparently Betzinger was not really able to do so. So I think we should take a look as well at a base and see how we can break that down. So let's get over here and let's take a look at this base. First of all, I think I should shout out the base building team of Tribe Gaming, especially Stefan, one of the best base builders out there, which is doing amazing for them. And just take a look at this base, especially those channel over here, which is making the life of those attackers really not the easiest because we all know Pekka Smash right now is incredibly strong. But when you're coming from the other side, like from this bottom side into the Eagle compartment, for example, this channel is making sure that it's kind of like a 50-50 where those troops are going. And this is like the worst if you plan out attacks because they could go to the top side, getting distracted by the wizard tower or to the tunnel. So a lot of possibilities right there. And this base defended really nicely with one of the best percentages in this match. So really good job to the base beating team from Tribe and I'm looking forward to the match later. But I think we should now go over to Woody who is standing by with an interview. Thanks very much, Itsu. It is my pleasure to be joined now by the Clash of Clans community manager from Helsinki, Finland. Welcome, Darian. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good, Woody. Um, I'm just watching these finals and man, just the competition level is just so intense. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. How are you doing over there? Oh, we're doing fine. It's getting pretty hot here in the studio, though, as there's only three teams left, and we have already seen some incredible wars so far. Perfect wars from Tribe Gaming. And as there are just three left, and you've been watching this whole time, I want to ask you, Darian, what have been the most impressive moments to you? Oh, I would have to say probably one of the, on the first day on Friday, watching Aphelion just really pull three star after three star after three star. Um, I think there was one match that just came down to the final seconds of a three star. I remember just, I was just gripping my chair the entire time. Just, I think all of you guys were screaming along with it. And it just really kept my adrenaline up. And it's just funny to see that momentum going just through all the teams of this entire finals. Well, as our good friend Seth likes to say, you'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. With that out <laughs> of the way, we're going forward to our next wars. And I want to know, what do you think that we can look forward to next? Is Tribe going to be able to keep up this huge offensive surge? Or is this going to be the time for the Queen Walkers to move back into the finals? Well, I mean, like in any professional sports, like once you have momentum going, it's really hard 
to, to stop that. And, you know, one of the strategies in professional sports is that when a team has momentum, they tend the opposing team tends to call a timeout to try to stop as much of that momentum as possible. So I think with Queen Walkers, uh, with Tri Gaming just coming off of the high of a perfect war, they've got momentum on their side. So uh, it's going to be important for Queen Walkers to try to halt that momentum as much as possible. And I'm, you know, personally, I'm rooting for both teams on this one. Like, I, I love the Queen Walkers. I got to go for my, my, my boys from Japan there. But uh, Tribe Gaming is such an awesome team that uh, this is probably one of the matchups I'm looking forward to the most. That's very diplomatic of you, Darian. We can certainly uh, see where you're coming from on both sides there. You know pretty much all of the players who are competing very well, and uh, it's going to yeah. be an exciting one either way as uh, the winner will go up against JX Tiger for the grand finals and that title of world champion. I do want to take a step back, though, and ask you a bit more about the Clash universe as a whole because, as we know, there's a lot of new games in development, Clash Mini, and you're also working on Clash Quest. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how these games are going to expand the Clash universe. So um, the Clash universe is vast, uh, as we already have with Clash of Clans and Clash Royale, both taking place in the same world. So from even though Clash Heroes, Clash Mini, Clash Quest are all being developed by different teams, they're designed to coexist alongside these other Clash games and not replace them. So for example, with Clash Quest, they're, they're adventures, traveling, um, you know, on a on a sea voyage, they, they their shipwreck crashes on an, a, a, a tropical archipelago, and they're kind of exploring this very kind of like Indiana Jones style. Um, Clash Mini is basically what what do the Clash pl uh, characters do during their downtime? They're playing a mini game, um, and Clash Hero is meant to be these characters on an adventure. So we're just kind of drawing more inspiration from the Clash universe, telling greater stories, and exploring this vast universe that we've created. Excellent. Well. We're really looking forward to more uh, news from those games. I know that uh, Itsu, especially at the top of that Clash Mini leaderboard, uh, has got his eyes set on the next round of balance changes and potentially more great news about expanding uh, that world. But with that out of the way, let's get back to Clash of Clans for a second here now. This has been the year of Town Hall 14, and there have been a lot of new units added, new buildings, big beefy armies getting upgraded across the board. The development team always has an opportunity to tinker around with the details and work to the best ability to make sure everything is spick and span perfectly uh, ready to produce. But then once it's in the hands of the players, it's all up to them to create these new army compositions and design new strategies. I want to know, how has the development team been most surprised by the players this year? Ooh, I the player's ingenuity is always surprising I me. Mean, so there's there's something in, in game development like we're we're that we make the game. We're not the best at it, even though we do have some people on the development team who we consider you know end game players. Um, but it's it's that player ingenuity that uh, they are the ones who come up with these interesting strategies, like in ways that we never thought possible. So seeing tribe doing their their dragon rider attack, I mean. We're watching going, wow, we didn't even think about that. Um, so like, I think like, anytime you have players competing at this end game eSports level, pretty much everything they do is surprising to us. It just, it blows our minds just how the creativity of these players works. Well, both on defense, where you have a huge map to lay out those bases, and on offense, as we saw just this weekend with the new use of super minions in a battle blimp by Tribe Gaming, we have seen the innovation go to the maximum level, and we're really excited to see what the players do with it next, especially with the next two matches deciding the world championship. So for a bit more in-depth look at some of the pro moves, uh, we're going to send it off. Thank you very much, Darian, for your time here today. We hope to see more of you again soon. But for now, let's take it over to Judo Sloth with some pro moves. Thank you, Woody. Yes, I wanted to break down a couple of the finer details from these attacks and explain it to you clearly. So feel free to rewatch this section if you need. Let's first take a look at the attack from Boom. And we always talk about a Coco Loon. Basically, you want to do that to protect your healers. So as we start the replay, the first Final detail I want to point out to you is the delayed deployment of the healers. Notice this air defense, and he wants to make sure he's not taking unnecessary damage. 
Once the healers are in, he will use a Coco Loon in front of the healers, never over the top of them. You want to check the area in front and make sure there is actually gaps where there could be traps. So that's just a couple of points for you on the use of a Coco Loon. Moving on to the next replay I have for you though, I want to break down this attack by Yo-Yo23 and particularly the Town Hall, the Giga Poison. If we roll the clip as the balloons move on in, it doesn't matter if it's balloons or anything else, it does so much damage. You want to use your haste or rage spell behind the Town Hall. It might make sense to come into the Town Hall fast, but you need to get out of that Giga Poison with the use of the Grand Warden ability as fast as possible, so you're not taking that unnecessary damage with the Giga Poison. On to the next clip for you then, we have the Siege Barracks. We often see this alongside the Pekka Smash style attack. As we play this one, you can notice the Siege Barracks is deployed initially with the King, wiping out a lot of the trash buildings in front of this area. And then what it actually does in terms of its placement is allow hog riders into the base. So as we move forward to the next part of the clip, notice the placement of the siege barracks up here. It's not only cleared out the buildings initially, but the hog riders then, as you will see once it's played, will move out of the siege barracks, directly targeting down towards the eagle artillery here and moving through down to the rest of the defenses. Let's just move on to the next attack for you then. I want to keep the pro tips nice and snappy for you and this one is the use of the rage spell and the balloons. Now, what we see as the clip is played is the Pekka Smash moving in what we typically see is the Battle Blimp moving across to the Town Hall with the Warden ability. Typical stuff, but notice these two balloons up here. When he uses the Rage with the Yetis, the balloons move on in towards the single Inferno. We do sometimes see an clone spell used in order to push balloons over that, but he just used the balloons in this scenario. Wanted to point that out, always try to be as efficient as possible. On to the next one then, let's keep this fire going. We've got the town hall up towards the 10 o'clock area and the wall break is important. He's already got the wall break in towards the multi. There's a wall break down the bottom here. Looks like it's not really doing anything, but it is so important for your wall breaker pathing. Wall breakers are attracted to buildings behind walls, not necessarily the walls themselves. So since this compartment is open, when he next deploys the wall breaker, notice it actually targets the buildings up in this area next to the town hall. That's exactly what he needs for his queen to move on in. So always make sure you're opening up those compartments to clear the wall breaker pathing through. As we go to the next one, that was Al Mualin. On offense, we now have one of Bad Zinger. And this one is a little pro tip when you're sending your Barbarian King in towards an area. When the King's ability is used, wait for one or two seconds. Look at all of the Barbarians continuing to spawn. Then he uses the Warden ability. All of those Barbarians are deadly once you have them inside that Warden ability. You can also use the King's ability prior to him getting in range of a single target Inferno, which means that you just have so much more tanking in that area. But let's take a little bit of a listen to one of the pro players themselves, Yuta14, who we will be seeing in the next war. Let's find out a little bit about how he approaches his attacks in war. Konnichiwa, Queen Walkers no leader Yuta14. Last hitter de Arkoto ni totte, watashini totte no imi wa, ma Queen Walkers no main o nigiru no wa boku ka natte omoimas. Ikasu mo korosu mo. プレイヤーに役割分担したいというクランに対するアドバイスがありますかということなんですけどまずは自分のプレイの特徴だったり自分の特徴っていうのをね第三者目線視点で俯瞰して見れることが大事かなと思います自分のプレイの特徴だったり
全開を取ることができるプレイヤーなら素早い攻撃で最初の方にアタックすることもできると思いますし、まあ、そうではなくて少し時間はかかってしまうよでもちょっと丁寧なプランを心がけてますって方なら後ろの方に属する方がいいのかなと思ってるのでまずは自分の特性自分の特徴っていうのをしっかり把握することが大事かなと思いますラストヒッターとしてあなたはどのようなプレッシャーを感じますかどのぐらいプレッシャーを感じますかということなんですけどまあ大会だったり状況だったりによって全然違うんですけどやっぱりこの世界大会はかかるプレッシャーが他の大会とは大きく違うと思いますしただその緊張だったりっていうのを本当に大事にしたくてそういう緊張だったりを自分の力に変えれるような形ができるっていうのがねやっぱり、まあ、世界で戦っていく上というのとラストヒッターとしての役割なのかなと思ってますはい。Thanks, Yuta. You, the community, voted 52 to 48% in favor of Tribe winning the next match. Let's go ahead and get ready for that war as our Queen Walkers team, seeking to be finalists again, will go up against the highest hit rate team in the tournament, Tribe Gaming. Take it away, Judo and Itsu. Thank you, Woody. It might have been in the favor of Tribe Gaming, but that was so close. Who knows who's going to win this one, Itsu? I mean, if you consider how fan favorite Green Walkers typically is, this is insane for a tribe. They mm. really have proven so far only weakness to the basis of JX Tiger. So far, otherwise, tribe gaming always with 15 stars. I'm really predicting those、uh, box bases again from Green Walkers to、so、maybe throw them off. But let's see if that's going to work. This match is going to be incredible. It certainly is. How. Good will Tribe Gaming be against them? Like you said, three perfect walls. We know they can take down the anti three star typical wall style bases, but the Queen Walkers, each and every one of them, pushing in Legends League. Maybe that will throw Tribe Gaming for a loop. We will have to wait and see. Looking at the averages, we can see that Tribe Gaming a little bit ahead. Now, these averages take into account the qualifier averages when the teams qualified, but also. So they are updated live from this weekend. So I'm not surprised to see Tribe a little bit in the lead there. Yeah, I think Tribe quite boosted their stats <laughs> over this event. Just,、uh, yeah, beating some world's finalist teams. But everything is now coming down to this. For both of those teams, the tournament life is on the line because whoever is going to win. It's going to face JX Tiger in the finals, and whoever is going to lose is dropping out of the competition, which would be obviously not the goal. <laughs> And let's face it, Itsu, this match, yes, it goes into the grand final. This is $50,000 on the line for this match. Whoever loses is third. They take home $100,000. And the winner gets at least $150,000. So technically, there's $50,000 on the line with just this match as well. We've got x c o r s i s kicking us off. And you predicted it, Itsu. We've got the box bases. Yet surprisingly, they are reusing the box bases, which means, I mean, at least like back then, We tried to like, plan on the bases from the previous day, like seeing okay, which bases did they use, what strategies would we use on this base. And I'm really, like, I'm really sure that this tribe gaming squad is using the same technique because it's so, so key to make sure that you're saving time if they're rerunning a base. And it seems like so far that's exactly what happened in this one. So the question is can Exorcist now come in with one of those Dragon and Dragon Rider attacks to make sure that they're showing that they can three star box bases as well? They've been pretty proficient with the Hydra style at attack. That's what we knew Tribe Gaming could do after that LCQ. However, With this one, it's a totally different type of base, like we said. I will say he's got fantastic pathing moving in towards the bottom of the base here for the Hydra. As you see it deployed, it will force the Barbarian King and the Archer Queen just up through this eastern side. And so far, I'd say this is looking pretty good because he's still got that Warden ability, might use it any moment. Yeah, that's right. And especially take a look at the Expos. The heroes, the ground part of this army, is at the top side. Well, all of those ground Expos are on the bottom left side where those dragons are. So those Expos are not doing anything right now. The biggest problem, though, the defending queen. This queen has to go down. He's investing the freeze, actually, forcing his own queen into the base. 
with only one expo that's staying left alive. And now it's all about the back and Royal Champion to go down. Oh, the Archer Queen. Look at the amount of health she has. Can the Archers even take her down? They do. Not after she took down the Dragon Rider, though. So a little bit unfortunate. He's getting frustrated. Exorcist. The Oh, he has definitely not got this one, Itsu. You can see that back end compartment just too strong. And how high can he push the percentage? This is the first attack that Exorcist has had this weekend that has not been a three star. All of his four other attacks were three stars. Now, I know you like the stats as well, Itsu. Is there anything that stands out with these bases? Well, the interesting thing is that we have not seen those box bases from any other team, right? Like, only Queen Walkers brought those bases into the mix. And there are a couple of different base setups, like Ring Base. The bo those box bases are one type of the bases. Then we had those diamond shape of bases, which means, like, the Eagle really far at the top or at the bottom side, and then the town on the other side, which as fun fact, has so far the worst defending rate out of all of the bases, while those box bases having the best defending rate of all of the bases used. Queen Walkers, this means, so far with the best defense, if they're using it, which they did not, surprisingly, in the first match versus JX Tiger. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It's interesting that they did not use it against JX Tiger. I wonder whether something in their scouting and preparation for this matchup made them not want to use it. It is definitely something that perks my curiosity since they used them to such good success against Athelion Esports. But who knows what will happen. That's just the first attack. Tribe Gaming have certainly been putting on the pressure to every single team. So I'm sure they won't let that phase them too much. But here we go, Itsu, Gaku. This is a huge attack looking to spin things around after what happened in that last war. Yeah, a lot of pressure on his shoulders after the first match. And him, unfortunately, getting this one star, a lot of black mines already off the table. And since I think he's out of range of this clan cast, he can even use sneaky goblins, which is perfect, because this means there's nothing needed to be invested except this blimp for the town hall. It's always nice when you can just take that down without any spells. And you can see he has a 50-50 mix of the Freeze and Skeleton spells for when he sends those Inferno, uh, Inferno Dragons in, using one of them just to help pick off the defending Clan Castle troops. And it's actually a little bit of a slow start here, but the Inferno Dragons can really wipe out <laughs> a base fast. That's right, we have already now record times with Dragons and Phone Dragons and in general this type of strategies. And he is in, but is going against the Sweeper, which is stalling him out quite a bit. The first kill uh, spells are coming down to make sure that the Queen, the Scattershot, and even Expos are tanked and cannot lock onto those Inferno Dragons. And the push is looking strong. Used a free spell onto that single target Inferno down the bottom of the base to protect the Dragon Riders, but then it got wiped out by one of these Seeking Air Mines. He's still got a pretty good push with the Inferno Dragons moving through the top end of the base. And notice he's holding onto that Royal Champion into, always just waiting for the optimal time to use it. Lots of red air bombs next to the multi-target Inferno, and he's missed it. That could be pretty huge because it's beaming on all of these Inferno Dragons. Yeah, and take a look at that. All of those red bombs going straight into the Inferno Dragons. The, the Inferno Tower finally drops. But the question now is, can his heroes finish things off? He has the King ability, has the Queen ability, and the Royal Team ability. All of them still on the board while the King is now pushing in with his ability. The Scatter is the last remaining defense, which can somehow defend this base. But I think Gaku got his revenge. Gaku is showing this was just a small mistake earlier, and he's making it count in this match. He has wrecked this one. Beautiful job to him. I've got to give him a shout out, being able to spin things around, pick up his confidence. And when we asked him what the number one piece of advice was in the current meta, he said, try not to pick difficult plans. That was ultimately what he said, and he showed it there with the Infernal Dragons. Nice, easy dive to the Town Hall, set the funnel, and just flush everything through the middle of the base. Yeah, that's right. Like, more complex strategies or, like, plans in general can, well, especially with, like, the hand shaking and all of the pressure yeah. on the line, can really easily fail. So if you're just, like, 
drawing the line with Inferno Dragons, <laughs> the loons in there as well, and pushing everything in between. That's obviously way, way less risky. So he used that fact and push through to the three star for him and his team, which means Queen Walkers is leading after the first attack. Quite significant with this percentage lead. Nibrax though, he has been one of the top players for Tribe Gaming. He, oh my gosh, the pressure he must have here. Now he does like the Blizzard Lalo. He's used it twice this weekend. He's managed to three star once with it and he used the Hydra on his other few attacks. Catching the Tornado oh. early on here, Itsu. That's going to actually catch the Blimp using the invisibility and pops it so that he does get into that Town Hall compartment. That was so close. He needs to take down now this town hall to make sure this blimp is worth it. And he... <gasps> oh, he's no scared. Way. Oh. No way. He's not getting in the town hall. Things are going from bad to worse for a tribe gaming after already exorcist. Their star player, the player with the highest hit rate, could not secure the three star. Now Nidrox as well is really struggling. Those box spaces alone oh. are giving Queen Walker such a huge lead. The town hall is not going down again. What does he do here? You could see the reactions before it happened for us on the replay. I guess, I mean, he's just got a Lalo into the town hall at this stage, unless he can get either his king or queen into that area or two, because he's got to start thinking about percentage, doesn't he? He's got to make sure that the Lalo just frees up as many non-defensive buildings on the outside so that he can push that percentage as high as possible, knowing they already had an 80, 81%. The queen, the queen is going wrong, the wrong way as well. He wanted to get that queen into the town hall to make sure that's finally going down. But with now, with this direction where the queen is going, this is not working. But remember though, I don't know if they flip things around, but I think all of those red bombs are in this compartment right there. If we remember the base correctly from yesterday, but this is what I feel like. The Lado now into the town hall, as you said, trying to get the percentage they can somehow save from this attack. But after that blimp, it did not work out at all. Yeah, he didn't commit too much to that town hall, wanting to make sure that it does indeed go down. But then notice how he's spreading the balloons all of the way around the base. He's got some to the north, some to the west, even some down to the south. And the reason is, why go for the eagle in the core or the scatter shot when you can just pick off the defenses on the perimeter to try and free up those buildings. You can see he's now deploying the minions in to try and quickly take them down before the eagle locks on and wow it's uh, this is an extremely low percentage queen walkers in an incredible position right now what do you make of this it is really hard i mean it's, it could be actually the lowest percent or one of the lowest percentage which we have seen so far and i don't know like hit rate wise it really surprises me that they're going with this blizzard attempt because like neighborhood's blizzard ladder hit rate is below 60 percent which is for a lot of players still quite a lot but if you take a look at his like zap Lalo, or even his like what gaku just used the inferno dragons he has 80 and 90 percent hit rate round one with the same amount of attacks which is incredible by the way i think at this point we should again shout out chase the ace on twitter for all of those amazing stats he's doing an incredible job of picking those up and making sure that everyone can use this so big thank you to him and tribe gaming in a really boss bad spot right now they certainly are. Yes, anybody that is following the Clash of Clans esports Twitter page might have seen you researching on those stats a couple of days ago prior to the event, making sure you are able to just spit them out when it is needed here. But this now for the Queen Walkers is huge. If we take a look at previous years, Tribe Gaming, they finished fourth in 2019 with yourself itsu so this is actually their best finish to a world championship ever whatever happens from this point they can go away with their heads held high queen walkers arguably one of the most experienced since the birth of esports they were a finalist in 2019 then they finished second in 2020 so they are looking to improve on that but jx tiger who's the other only remaining team they're the only one out of these three that hasn't got any other finalist experience. Yeah, that's right. And maybe that's even good for them because they have not too much pressure on their shoulders. 
But now we have Stardra coming in with his favorite attack strategy, which is this Pekka Smash. But he's bringing a Golem, he's bringing a Yeti, and he's bringing even a couple of Ice Golems to the mix as well, making sure that he's as flexible as possible with this setup. Then the Lock Dodger. The Lock Dodger, we know how powerful it can be just pushing through the core. But we're seeing those open channel as well, which can lead sometimes to really unfortunate Pekka Smash ending. So let's see how the party looks like. The Golem is in, those Pekka are walking as well. But the King so far is delaying, and this could cause the Queen to go to the wrong side. It could do. Let's keep a, keep a close yep. eye on this. There you go. She has stepped down to this area. And unfortunately, because he's got so much in that compartment, she's not going back in there and the other major thing here it's too is the queen has the healers fortunately she's actually going through the wall into the middle yeah she's trying to join up forces again with this smash in the middle but just, there's just so much damage she needs to invest so many spells so many resources to get her back on track and he still needs to get that town hall down the lock launch is doing a great job of actually opening up this town compartment but now those like this channel is coming in play as i just mentioned earlier in the telestrator segment those channel really can like completely lure those Pekka and everything away from the town hall. That's exactly what's happened, it's you. You called it. The Pekka have moved down towards the four o'clock area of the base. He hasn't got a lot moving to the town hall. He's still got the queen ability, so he is holding on to that as long as he can, just to guarantee that that town hall does indeed go down. But you can see the amount of defenses on the back end of the base, plus the fact they have to get through the poison. It's not going to be the three star, so it's a big defense of what Tribe Gaming needed, but still, they are so far behind on percentage now. They basically need another two defenses from the Queen Walkers. That's right. It's good for them that there is a defense, and Queen Walkers is showing that, like, showing that they're humans, but at the same time, it is still not looking that good. If we take a look at the percentage, like 76% from time Tribe Gaming on average, this is not where we, you would like to be. And especially now Queen Walkers with a three star and now this above 80% two star, they're going to be way above of those 76%. Stadra did manage to get the three star in that previous matchup. The first one that he has got this weekend, but unfortunately not able to roll that over into this war. If they do move on past this round into the grand final, I think he's going to have to make sure he can calm his nerves because, well, it's a five man roster. Everybody is pivotal when it comes to this stage. Yeah, that's right. It's always a lot of pressure on the line at this stage. Like, you knowing one lose and you're out. And mm. it's not like, okay, and after that it's going to be easy. No, Jake's Tigers waiting in the finals with them already having one of those best of three matches won due to coming into the finals with the upper bracket, how the system works. But now let's take a look at Tribe Gaming. If they can somehow start their comeback and they really need to start things because, I mean, the surprising thing, they had 12 stars, and other than that, only 15 stars every single time. So, is it going to be another 12 star war for them, or can they maybe save the 13 stars? Which I think needs it's like they need 13 stars at least somehow to make a chance of a comeback yeah. versus the Queen Walkers. Well, it is still possible, and they have been the most impressive offensive team throughout this tournament, without a shadow of a doubt. The thing that's interesting, though, is They've only been in the position where they've been behind in a war once, and they obviously lost that one. So is that a case where the pressure now starts to mount? Evecek has really stepped it up in the finals. He's had four attacks, four three stars, and he really likes these smash style attacks, doesn't he? Either the Pekka Smash or the Super wi uh, Witches, he always tends to opt for this style of attack. That's right, and especially in the current meta where you have most of the times like an expo close to a scatter shot, or maybe even like another cannon, things which you can all then combine together with lightnings and take those out. This is where those super, um, super witches can really shine and take a lot of those bases out. He's having um, those witches, which then which you can then use on the outside with this king combined. And one thing which we have already seen now a couple of times from him is that he's using always one super witch to the outside, which is really uncommon. But maybe this is a approach how he was able to like work against and work um, towards not time failing with this really time consuming strategy. 
Yeah, that's an interesting point, Itch Itzu. I hadn't actually realized that because we thought in one of his previous attacks that it had walked, but in fact, like you said, just helping to clear out that area a little bit faster before merging back in. Now, the Log Launcher will get access into this middle compartment where he can get to the multi, should be able to then get nice access to the Town Hall. But yeah, just waiting on that Warden ability. Oh, when's he going to use it? Maybe for the loons? I don't know what he's waiting for. Now there's the Warden ability, but the King with all of those Bebeans is already down at this point. And the Queen is luckily coming back, and now all of those Super Witches need to make this push towards the Town Hall. The Town Hall is pretty much being the last defense for this base. The multi Inferno Towers are getting approached. The multi Inferno Towers should fall right now. And then this Queen, everything is relying on her. And he even has a jump spell left. Yeah, he is looking good here with a couple of spells. Queen ability, RC ability. It's always nice when the Royal Champion has that ability. Bit of a celebration to ping through some of the back end defenses. And I like the split here, actually. It's you with the Queen and RC moving up to the 12 o'clock area. Super Witch is going through the wall. Will help with time across to that right hand side. So Tribe can continue to breathe a little sigh of release, uh, relief here, getting a three-star and also that defense prior to this. You know when it's looking good, when you can place your jump spell for the clean-up super, which is on the right side. This is when you know <laughs> you're go. looking good. That was the first as well from Eve Check. The thumbs up for us as well. This means Stripe Gaming is with the first three star on the board. But they now need defenses and they need really good defenses because of this really huge, huge, yeah, like mess up earlier from them, which is uh, causing them to be really behind on percentage level. You can kind of see the morale of Tribe Gaming there as well. Still a little bit down in the dumps. And obviously they will be given the situation, but I feel they need to just pick themselves up. They're still in this. Another defense here really pulls them back into contention. We'll level up stars. And obviously they're probably still going to be behind on percentage, but there's still a couple of attacks left. That's right, there's a lot of attacks left and obviously defenses left for both of those teams. So nothing is over yet and we're waiting for that next attack. Most likely stars coming in for the Queen Walkers next. This is like the attack style. This is something which I feel is really cool to see. Those different teams from different regions, how they approach those matches with fixed or non-fixed attacking orders of those players. Greenwalkers now, as we said, with stars coming in, and he's coming in again with a crazy attack, which you never ever test anyway. So it's <laughs> all about him either messing up the attack or just completely wrecking this base. Yeah, he always likes a Lava Loon style attack, but you never quite know what other troops will be in the mix. The spells he is going to take, you can notice three bat spells are the ones that have perked my curiosity. But notice the freeze for the sweeper. This is something that maybe the sweeper pointing in that direction means he can feel a bit more confident flying in there that there's not necessarily going to be a trap for the battle blimp. Yeah, that's right. Really investing a lot into that to make that work. Now, like using yeah, the Queen with that new skin at the bottom side to take down the Clan Castle nice and easy. And now we're seeing again one of those charges towards their Town Hall. He needs to make sure that the Queen is going to the right direction. He has a Golem to support it as well. But, Judah, take a look at that. This Tesla form on the far right side. If there are any ground skeletons in there, this Queen can really get into big, big trouble to get that Town Hall. I mean, he has two invisibility spells left, which he can invest. But at the same time, it's not going to be easy to take this Town Hall out. It's certainly not. And I'm looking at those bat spells thinking, is he going to pop them just, uh, you know, beside that? Once the Town Hall does indeed go down, we've got the Yeti trying to make the funnel. Yeah, that champion queen skin, remember, limited edition for the, the World Championship does have to use that invisibility there, it too. Yeah, the Warden was hammering away on that queen. A lot of damage. The Golem now is tanking, but there is just so much damage. Like we said, there's another big question mark. Are there any skeleton traps? If that would be the case, it would get really, really problematic for him. But so far, there's no more traps coming up. He's investing another freeze. Beautiful. This is so many spells already invested. The question now is if he has enough spells for the back end, the Queen is going for another storage. Yeah, he's investing everything. You saw the first freeze was picture perfect. Got the Town Hall Expo and Inferno Tower. Just 
missed it on that second one, but the Queen does secure the Town Hall, and he can now begin his Lalo phase with the Royal Champion getting the middle area. Look at the Dragon Rider just aiming to get towards that Eagle with the Bats to tank for the air defense. What is going on? This is genius wow, with those Bats. The Lalo's now coming into the Splash Damage era where he's using the Ward Ability and the Haste to take those out quickly. Now it's all about the Red Bombs. Can those Red Bombs, there's the first one, can those Red Bombs now take down the Loons? Otherwise, this is looking good. And you know the time is ticking. 34 seconds left. Oh, he's got 25% with that 30. 30 seconds, is it oh. going to be enough with the Tornado Trap as well, catching the balloons, and he's running out of steam. It was looking so good. I actually tune into a lot of Stars' uh, YouTube Legend League live streams, and it just looked exactly as he does. Cool, calm, collected, easily swinging through the base, but you mentioned this, Itsu, when we were watching the last war, Barbarian King on defense, he can <laughs> stall a lot and make sure that the percentage is not quite as high. You know what we're talking about, like, he should just jump up a little bit, like, get those <laughs> minions out of the air, but yeah, he's just there to make sure that he's providing and trying to tank for anything which is left there with his hit points, making sure those minions cannot take those buildings down to increase the percentage, so really, Really good try. I mean, just the idea with those bats was genius, yeah. but at the same time, it kind of felt like the Tribe Gaming was expecting some type of entry like this because the Tessa farm was 100% versus a Queen entry like what Stars did right there. So, good attack, but at the same time, good base pitting on the other side. Completely, and that is what happens when the best teams in the world go head to head. Remember, this is to progress to the grand final. The loser of this war is third, which is incredible, but also $50,000 on the line here. And you've got to say, Itsu, a huge momentum shift now in the favor of Tribe Gaming. That's right, they're now back tied up on stars, but you can still see the percentage. Take a look at that. So much percentage still in favor of Queen Walkers. And now Tribe Gaming is coming in with Maxi onto this base of Klaus. And this is no box base. So they they only have so limited amount of box bases apparently there. And take a look at that. The Queen is losing her ability. He's dropping a freeze. Wanted to drop an invisibility spell. This is huge. Queen ability freeze. So many things lost from the beginning. And even the unicorn is getting taken down. Oh, that is huge. Captain of Tribe Gaming, Maxi, needs to be able to keep his cool here. Yes, the Queen ability is gone, but you can't let that phase you too much. I know that yesterday he had a little bit of a nightmare in one of those attacks. He's been able to catch his breath a little bit here, reset, which is a good thing for him. And you can notice the Queen next to that Golem Kingskin. He <laughs> is huge, the little headhunter, trying his best to take it down and does so successfully. That's right, but now he's facing that clan castle. There was already a black man, so this queen has a little bit less power with those healers, and he needs another rage invested. And remember, he is using this jump spell, which means it's one rage less, which you typically have, or like two freezes. At least it's less spell power from him uh, right there. Now it's all about can those dragons, can those dragon riders finish off the base, and especially can they take down the town with the healers getting targeted by the Mojan Inferno Tower? Oh, he's got to be careful. Invests the invisibility, then the jump to try and push the queen in towards that multi. Get it down ASAP. Notice he has the stone slammer selected, and when he uses that, it's a little bit more difficult to get that town hall because the queen still has a long way to go into particularly with the two expos i see just underneath it yeah and there is their blim he's trying to save he's trying to save the rage because oh. he wants oh the warning ability is right there but he tries to save the rage for the yetis which are inside their blim the single fur towers on the queen he has to freeze the queen is going down it's not the making it's not making it you said it one freeze, one rage is left to save this attack. Queen is down, he's frozen the Town Hall with that single target Inferno. It is super close, all or nothing now for Eve Maxi. Is it a three star? Is it a one star? We've got the Dragon Rider onto the Town Hall, but it is going down fast with the dragons. Oh, I don't think he's going to make it, it's a Dragon Rider falls, and unfortunately, 
unfortunately, it is not going to happen for Eve Maxi. This was painful for the Queen Walkers in that last matchup. But now, Tribe Gaming find themselves even further behind when they were just starting to catch back up. That's right, this base was set up against Tribe. They knew they liked to do those eager charges with yeah. those blimps towards the town hall. And that was exactly what Klaus and Queen Walker spaded over there. So incredible base. This was not a bad attack. Like he, okay, in the beginning he had a couple of like uh, mistakes with the, with the freeze and the rage. But anyways, like the blimp not making it. This base was designed to exactly stop this blimp, stop this setup. And this is what Queen Walkers did with this one. So huge, huge props to them. Getting things sorted with those base building and getting with that a bigger and bigger advantage because they now already had two crazy, crazy good defenses. Oh, they did. As soon as that tornado trap popped, caught the battle blimp. I could just see it happening because he'd already used the warden ability. And Queen Walkers, like you said, they tested that because as soon as the battle blimp came out of the tornado trap, started moving a little bit further forward, there was the two seeking air mines to take it down. And like you said, if that town hall goes down to the Yetis inside that battle blimp, totally different story. Not only would the Giga Poison have been out of the way prior to the dragons getting there, but all of that damage they were taking wouldn't have happened. Yeah, that's right. Like if the blimp is connecting, it's going to be a three star no matter what. But at the same time, I th like if we remember the beginning, he could have had the queen ability to save that. But anyways, we're in the next attack. Klaus is in, and he's coming in with his super bonus again with those 13 regular wall breakers, which you have to bring because they have only two super troops. Super bonus and super wizards are getting used. So the the only option is if you want to get through walls, the wall breakers. So let's see. Warwalk is starting things off to make sure that he's getting the funnel, getting the value which is needed to make sure that Queen Walkers is pushing him further ahead with a possible next three star. Yep, we've seen him use pretty much this exact combination yesterday in the War versus Aphelion, getting the three stars as well, might I add, with the Wall Breakers opening up this compartment to the right-hand side as the Grand Warden is just slowly taking things out here. And yesterday, I remember specifically the Royal Champion and how he held onto multiple freeze spells, which was the defining factor in the end. Let's see if the exact same thing happens today. Yeah, he is for sure trying the same thing with that limb, with that clone. And there we go. But the first Black Man is connecting to those healers. The second Black Man is getting blocked by that Warden ability. Now we have that blimp flying across. Can the blimp reach the town? That's the question. We have seen this now many times. The blimp is so crucial. And there is the tornado. And there is the clone. Is the oh, town no! going down? The town hall so far, not on the balloons going. They do, they go to the single target Inferno what? Itsu. They bypass the town hall. He's still got the Royal Champion that he can send into that area. Surely that has to be the play here. Knowing that Eve Maxi just got a one star, a two star would keep the Queen Walkers in the lead on stars. That's right, he's now waiting where he should drop his spells and obviously the Royal Champion. There is one wizard trying to take down one of the defenses to make sure that pathing is better for that Royal Champion into the Town Hall. So far waiting, oh, he's still waiting. Oh. There's the Royal Champion coming in from the cannon from the right side into the Town Hall. I know that Klaus sometimes makes some nervous plays. I thought for a second he was going to deploy the Royal Champion at seven when the King was tanking and try and just use the invisibility up top when she got there. But I think uses the correct move here, plays it safe because he does not need to get it's super trouble, risky. But yeah, I think he still gets this even from the top because he's got the RC ability and the invisibility spell. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Going from a one star to a safe two star to a three star. Well, he just got everything, every single star possible collected in one attack. That's that's pretty that's pretty good. You're pretty good because 34 seconds left, and this means time won't be an issue either. Hey, he swagged three free spells and an invisibility spell the other day. Now he, oh, he didn't quite swag the headhunter. I thought he was <laughs> going to, but there we go. Deploys it right at the end. Three stars for Klaus. Beautiful attack. And I think this is huge because not only does it keep them well above of Tribe Gaming, it means moving to the grand final with the bigger picture in mind, they need the highest confidence because remember, 
if they get there, they've got to beat JX Tiger twice. That's right, and so far there, were, there was no team having an answer to the to the JX uh, Tiger bases, right? Like JX Tiger so far has been, had been one of the best teams in base bidding, except the Queen Walkers. You can argue with their box bases, but yep. surprisingly they did not use them earlier today. Maybe we're going to see that in the final if they're going to win this match. But first. Maybe Tribe has uh, something in store for us, which can provide us of a comeback, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. Do you think the Queen Walkers were saving something like that for the Grand Finals? I guess if they were, we would see their best bases now because it's knockout phase. They need to get to the Grand Final first. You called it, here we go, another box base. But the Super Bowlers, they're sometimes pretty good against this. Yeah, I mean, it is legend bases versus legend strategies, right? Because we have most of those top legend players playing those super bowlers. And there's a reason for it, because they're against this specific legend meta. They're good against that. So Tribe Gaming bringing those super bowlers to the mix, bringing them in on those box bases. And it seems like Kronos wants to go all in, because either he wants to go into the scatter or into the eager compartment, with both possibilities would be kind of risky, but let's see which entry he's going to choose. Yeah, I don't have the eagle eye on base recognition that you do, Itsu, obviously with yourself being the ex-pro player and a base builder yourself, but I'm pretty confident this is the base that was used against Athelion yesterday with the Hydra, which did get the defense, obviously switching to ground this time. Nothing for that Town Hall at the moment, but she's using the minion to take out the storages and help with that push. But a big, strong entry from the opposite side of the base, pretty much going all out for the three stars now, because Tribe Gaming, they know they need that. Yeah, he is doing like the classic legend entry, which is really risky. Like, it is really, really risky, especially with things not going inside. Oh, no. This can definitely be a one star because Super Bowl is mostly dead. Heroes did not go where he was where he was planning them, so nothing is going to plan, and the funnel was way too hard for him. And the Kagu base is so far looking good again. Oh, the Super Bowlers, like you said, they split up, meaning all of the healers were on one Super Bowler. He's lost all of the DPS through the middle of the base. And unfortunately for Kronos, I just don't see what he can do here. He's got the Royal Champion in multiple spells, but pathing to that Town Hall is incredibly difficult. Yeah, I think as he's doing, he's just got to send the Royal Champion directly in it and forget about percentage. Yeah, he just has to save the second star. The Town Hall is going down. The Warden is giving a, yeah, a good fight against those Lava Pups, which are just swarming that Warden at the end. The Queen is not going to get any further. And this means this is like a Royal Champion invisibility charge into the heart of the space with not getting too many percentage again. Yeah, this is all but done now. Queen Walkers in a similar position to what they found themselves in yesterday. In fact, a better position because Utah 14 basically just needs a star, whereas yesterday he actually needed the two star. So <laughs> not much pressure moving into this last attack. But again, I just want to shout out Tribe Gaming because I think a lot of people in the community have been so impressed with their performance this weekend. Yeah, that's for sure. I think Tribe Gaming did a really good job. I mean, no one even predicted them to win the first match, right? Like, oh. everyone predicted Alternate pretty much. And so they got already so much further than a lot of prediction could have, like, like you could have thought after all of those predictions. So, really good job to them getting this third seed. But Queen Walkers are just looking strong and is picking up momentum to maybe have the chance of the comeback then in the finals later versus Jax Tiger. Oh, it's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? Particularly because Queen Walkers have been in this situation. Now, I have to say, JX Tiger, they didn't really show any nerves, if you ask me. If they, were, if they were going to crack under the pressure, I think they would have done so already. But who knows? You can never train for a World Championship Grand Final. And the Queen Walkers, they've been there. Uta 14, though, he'll be wanting to finish off in style. I know we mentioned the one star, all of that stuff, but actually, he'll be wanting the three star here just to make sure they do move into that final with as much momentum as possible. Yeah, that's right. And he's doing out those rocket loons nice and early. There is the freeze. This is exactly how we should handle them. Freezing those. There is the poison coming down. The queen HP is looking good. And this means this queen is going to move forward without losing too many hit points or he losing too many spells. 
I love when we get to see the player actually with their device as well. You can see <laughs> Unit 14 with his phone there. I honestly don't know how the players use a small device. Now that I have a larger tablet, I couldn't use the phone. But Unit 14 controlling this incredibly well with the Queen locking onto the Town Hall. And you can see it too. He actually doesn't even need a star, 38%. So here we go. Queen Walkers getting that star means they will be moving into the Grand Finals and guaranteed at least a second place finish. That's right, but we're hoping for more. We're hoping for Queen Walkers and especially the Utah getting into that finals with their head held high. So Utah chasing this three star with the Dragon Riders coming in from this far right side with the Slammer, which is one of the strongest combinations for Dragon Riders because it's giving you so much power, so much tankiness for this troop. Yep, and the balloons were getting pretty good value over there as well, popping the Seeking Air Mines, which is exactly why you send the balloons in with the Dragon Riders. Uses the Warden ability to catch most of them. The single locks onto the Queen. He's already used the ability, so does have to use his final spell in terms of the freeze to try and keep that Queen alive. And his Dragon Riders have split all over the place now, Itsu. Yeah, that's the not so good thing for him, but the defending Royal Champion is going down, the attacking Royal Champion has to use her ability, the multi furniture at the top side is going down, so many things are happening at the same time, the healers switched over to the Royal Champion, now there's a Royal Champion charge taking place. I can see a little bit of a smirk starting to be there on Unit 14's face as he continues to do everything that is needed. He knows they're moving to the finals, just pushing the percentage as high as possible here. He's super close to even getting this. With the Archer Queen running down the bottom end of the base, it's not that he would fail on damage here. It's all a matter of time, but he's got a lot of minions and no splash. Yeah, he has a lot of minions right there. The giant is tanking. Sneaky Goblins are coming in to make sure time is not an issue because Judo, he's closing in, he's no it. red bombs. 14 seconds left and Utah is turning things around with an attack which in the middle part did not look that good, but he wouldn't be Utah. He wouldn't be the final attacker for Queen Walkers when he wouldn't just easily three star those. Quick crack of the old neck there, <laughs> just to make sure that they are ready. But look at that, no celebrations. They know they're moving into the finals. They have to stay dialed in, focused, and that is what they have their minds on. Interestingly, I think with that attack, what Uta 14 told us prior to this championship kicking off is that he learned how to be flexible from his teammates. And I really think we've seen that shining through there. He was able to keep the attack well under control when it looked like things weren't quite going right. That's right, like that, but that's something which you learn in Legend. And I mean, Queen Walkers is famous for being those trophy pushers as well, which is giving them so much flexibility, so much power and planning quickly, but as well getting those attacks, which might look bad to us normal, normal clashers, but them to them is like, yeah, I mean, I don't know why you were concerned. We got this all day long. <laughs> yep under control all day long. Again, commiserations to Tribe Gaming. They are third place in the World Championship, going home with $100,000. But it is the Queen Walkers that are successful. Moving on to the Grand Finals. Remember, JX Tiger waiting in the wings. JX Tiger only need to win one match since they beat the Queen Walkers earlier on today. But that is a stellar performance, given that Tribe Gaming have put up 15 stars in three of their wars prior to this. Yeah, we cannot highlight those base bidding teams enough because they are like the heroes behind the scenes. They're not the ones which are on stage and attacking and getting most of the praises. They are the ones which are working in the back, which are doing those scoutings and getting those bases ready for those teams to make sure that they can perform to them. Absolutely. We have the stage set ready for the teams to get into war, battle it out. But let's go ahead and hand it over to Lady B to take a closer look at one of the attacks from that war. Thank you so much, Judo. What a superb victory there for the Queen Walkers. And we are, of course, going to highlight one of the attacks that 
really turned around. Very, very impressive here from Klaus. If anyone was going to do it, it would have been Klaus. And yes, he did. So let's take a look through at this Super Bowler Smash. We're seeing it a lot more. And if you're not familiar with the Super Bowler Smash, it's very similar to most of the Smash style attacks. So if we take a look at the replay in action, we'll see the similar setup in Funnel using the Warden to kick things off, shaping up some of the pathing on the outskirts. Very nice use that we have of a Yeti to, harp, to start settling up the rest of the funnel so we can get the navigation to move through inside the base just a little bit deeper. Now, what I really like about this is we can see our path line moving along and what's easily reachable is all of these items right over the wall. So we can use the jump in a really nice position here. So looking at the way the funnel's set up, this is where we actually start getting into the tricky situation. We've got everything perfectly in the core, but it is this blimp that gets stuck in the tornado trap. Those loons crop out with the clone spells. The tornado trap sets them off course away from the town hall over the inferno. And look at this, goes for the air sweepers. So this is where Klaus is in a very sticky situation and this is where we talk about recovery. Everything else went to plan except this part of the raid. The town hall is left. You can see we have beautiful pathing created. A lot of the base taken out here but we need to find a way to get the town hall down. Now with smash style attacks often you're leaving your royal champion to the end and this gives you a lot more control to handle these types of situations but it doesn't mean you can still get the job done. This came down to the wire to pull in that three star situating uh, Queen Walkers into the position they are now moving forward into the final. So great use of this Royal Champion and patience. Patience is key here. Look at that Royal Champion as she is low on health, working her way through, hanging on to the ability. And of course, one of those things I like is the back pocket invisibility spell. This will always, almost always get you out of these kind of tough situations when used right. So Klaus with a beautiful three star performance where we really thought it was going to turn into a one star. Great move there. But why don't we also take a look at one of the bases. We're also going to highlight Queen Walkers on this one. Now we saw Queen Walkers using a lot of these box bases and this is because they have heavy DPS on the opposite side of the town hall which is basically uh, going to force you to invest um, something like a siege barracks into the town hall and then your troops have to really work on just taking care of things without the heroes actually to support because they're working from the opposite side and not getting as much value as you like. So this has really tripped up Tribe Gaming and many other teams this weekend. But that see the uh, scattershot placement here is one thing that I wanted to highlight for this particular raid where that was the key for taking out Nebrex early on in this one. The placement able to reach right over where the Blizz came in. So always thinking about those placements of some of your troops. So beautiful job here from Queen Walkers. We've seen exceptional offense. Except, exceptional defense, and uh, this is how they're making it through into the finals. But now it's time to t uh, check in with Woody. The Queen Walkers are victorious. They're moving on to the last round, our grand finals against JX Tiger. The connective effervescence of this Japanese team has buried the hatchet of Tribe Gaming, a valorous effort. And third place to them along with $100,000, huge improvement over past years and a great placement in the end. But we now have the opportunity for JX Tiger, the only undefeated team to take it all away. Well, what's it gonna be? Folks out there, we want you to vote and let us know who you think is going to earn this trophy and the title of world champions. Is it gonna be the Queen Walkers with hashtag QW or will it be JX Tigers with hashtag JX? Let us know in the chat right now. We will accumulate all those results and let you know who you think is gonna win. But. Until then, we're gonna get a little bit more word from one of our pro players. Indy from Bad Zinger has a very interesting and intricate attack to show you how to do a Queen Charge Dragon Rider. Take it away, Indy. Hi, I'm Indy, a player for Bad Zinger. And let's break down one of the top attacks of the year. 
first up, uh, before sending our archer queen, we make funnel for our queen so that he, he goes inside the sky compartment. To funnel, we use balloons and some sneaky goblins, and after that, we break the wall into some sky compartments and wait till the CC pulls out. And once we got CC pulled out, we drop jump and poison to kill the clan castle. And after that, we deploy our Grand Warden, Barbarian King and Battle Blim to get the Town Hall safely and Barbarian King for equal compartment to get the high DPS to protect our Battle Blim and King who we use Sneaky Goblins to get the Town Hall safely. And we slowly start deploying our dragon riders to clean up what an attack this was the perfect warning ability to cover the blimp cover the king cover the royal champion and the queen that was a really really good plan when i got this restore i, I got i felt satisfied because i knew that it would be triple because i practiced that strategy for a while and i knew the result because i felt confident thanks to our Fans for supporting us and watching while we played this game on big stage. Thank you all. From all of us who are here to learn from the best, thank you, ND, for that insight. But hey, we've got more insight up in store for you next. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Lady B has invited Clash with Eric for a special edition of Clash Me Anything. They're also joined by Carbon Finn. Why don't you go and take it away, guys? Thank you so much, Woody. Welcome to Clash Me Anything. Very excited to be bringing this to you live. Of course, I'm joined by Carbon Finn, but we have our special guest who flew all the way in for this Clash with Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm good. This is a crazy finals, and I've definitely been impressed by the team today, especially JX Tiger. What a surprise. Yeah, this is, uh, this is coming down to the wire, and we've seen some crazy defenses, offenses coming into the mix. Now, Let's get it, let's get down to business. Let's start off. And as a fellow ESL, uh, ESL Mobile Open caster, I gotta ask you this. We've seen Mobile Open bringing us some of the top contenders through into the last chance, uh, last chance qualifiers through North America and Europe. Mm. And uh, we've seen some impressive performances. But we have four teams here that have played through the uh, European circuit. But despite seeing all these beautiful performances from North America, we're not seeing any of those teams here in the World Championships. And we've seen them through the qualifiers as well. So I would like to know, what can the North American teams do here? Like, what can they do to get to this level with the Asian and the European teams really dominating so far? Yeah, I mean, it's been very dominant from the European teams. We've had big front runners across the North American circuits there with Train Station Gaming making it into the last chance qualifier. We've had Space Station Gaming, who honestly, a lot of people expected them to make it all the way here, but they're not here. And they got some changes coming to their rosters. We've, there's a lot of rumors going around right now that Bernal is gonna get signed. And one of their weaknesses I felt for quite a while was they had Marinal on the team but he didn't have somebody of the same language that was able to work with him. And this is a very team-centered game here, so not having somebody that can speak the same language definitely hinder them, and that is going to give them a big boost here, Lady B. Absolutely. I think that's something we're all going to maybe look forward to. If it happens, still speculative. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do have some viewer questions here, and we have this one coming from Twitter. This comes from Qatar to Jasvi. He would like to know, what do you think makes a competitive war player different from a competitive trophy pusher? So, like, what are these positive highlights that each one of these has? Have that are their strengths? Yeah, that's a good question. The biggest thing from uh, trophy pushers compared to people who mainly play just wars is be able to, first of all, react on the fly when things go wrong, but also quickly break down a base. You only have a very, very small amount of time and you have to take whatever you got and triple a base there, which is very, very useful 
if you're one of the first attackers because you have to remember during these esports wars we only have a couple of minutes here we only have eight minutes before the first attack and you have to break down bases very very fast here right carbon yeah absolutely you have to be able to take that down and especially in wars we talked about with the queen walkers what they were able to do like gaku where they push really high up into legends league and they push and they are able to come up with these attack strategies but it's been their bases, those box style bases. I'm sure all the viewers at home, they've gone up against them so many times and they can be so frustrating, Lady B. They definitely are. And we just saw that in the last matchup. Now we've got one more viewer question here for you both. Uh, and this comes from the chat from today, from Papa Reload. He'd like to know, seeing how the game is right now, all the meta, what is something that you would like to see come to the game uh, in the future? And how would that have an effect on the game? Well, I want to see level six witches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that coming, did you? No, oh, no. No. Someday, someday. We'll get past talent 12 witches and uh, get something a little bit higher. Yeah. Well, I would probably say it's really nice to see maybe use of Super Valks or Valkyries because I think the biggest thing is Super Valkyries, they drop that Rage Spell, but we have never really seen the pros really utilize that. We've seen the Ice Town with the Freeze, but utilizing that Rage would be really cool. It really would be. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk a little bit. we got one match left to go, but there is a possibility that this could reset. So in a double elimination format, what happens is you have a 15th match occur if the loser of this match was previously undefeated, that being JX Tiger right now. Uh, and that gives the opportunity at a second elimination or total victory. So we'll have to wait and see what comes with that. But Carbon and Eric, who do you think will win? I have been turned into a believer here for JX Tiger, <laughs> but I still really, really root for the Queen Walkers. They've worked so hard. They've won so many community tournaments. JX Tiger, definitely a massive surprise with that team. And they have a real chance here, but I'm still feeling like the Queen Walkers. I think they can make the comeback. I think they can still oh. take this. You think they can make the comeback? Well, JX Tiger just has to win one more, True. and they are the world champions. So I think that's gonna be a huge edge in their favor. And I think JX Tiger might just take it there. Interesting. I think it's going to be a tough call either way, but we're in for some great action. And I'm curious what the uh, community thinks, if they agree with you. Yeah. So why don't we head back in and talk to Woody and find out what they think. After millions of clans have fought, after months of competition from all around the world leading up to this very moment, the grand finals have arrived. The Queen Walkers and JX Tiger are the last two standing and the world championship title will be decided very shortly. We asked you at home if you thought one team or the other would take the title and here are the results. Queen Walkers take it with 65% of the community vote up against JX Tiger with 35% of it. This is a big upset for the undefeated team to not take the top spot. Let's go ahead and send it off to Judo and Itsu for this war to start. Well, we are here. We are ready, as you have seen. JX Tiger, what do they need to do to win the hearts of the community, Itsu? Still. Queen Walkers have majority of the vote and they need to win two wars here. JX Tiger could lose the first one, win the second, and they are still world champions. Yeah, that's right. JX Tiger is having a huge advantage going into this. It was like mindset advantage because they just won versus Queen Walkers and with a really incredible performance. But at the same time, the big deciding factor in that match was the one star, which gave them the edge, which gave them the advantage. So the question is, how do they handle the situation with maybe not a one star on defense? JX Tiger have won every war and they have made the opposing clan struggle 
massively. Their bases are next level. I think we can say that. But will Queen Walkers come in with those box bases this time? Here we have the lineup of JX Tiger. You are getting used to their names now, and those stats are incredible. But look at Vic <laughs> on that right hand side. Qualifier and stats from this weekend 100% across the board. I remember replicating his Pekka Smash attack back when we had the Qualifier Challenge. Yeah, what? Makes this even more impressive. So far in this Worlds event, he always went first. Like, it's not like he's going last and like having time to plan. No, he's going first every single time. And you should know it. It's like around about eight minutes of planning, and that's it. Versus every type of base. This is just incredible. But as well incredible is the other team, Queen Walkers, fan favorites. We have just seen it. 65% of you guys out there are voting and supporting the Queen Walkers. And they're coming in with really good percentages as well. They certainly are. The roster remains unchanged from last year's grand final, where they fell to alternate attacks. Is it their year this time? Or can JX Tiger win one more war? They have yet to be defeated. They have been so incredible. Five attacks, and they could be our world champions. Yeah, I think we should really highlight that here because JX Tiger came into this final from the upper bracket. This means that they only need to win one match. If Queen Walkers wins this next match, it's going to be another one because they're coming from the lower bracket. This is something which you need to keep in mind. And we obviously are going to see who can take this win and take a look at those percentages and those stars. They are incredible. They're incredible. And we have to wait if they can stay on the level or if they're going to crumble. Because so far, those two teams were the best teams on defenses. And maybe that's the deciding factor. Both teams with the best defenses both got into the finals. Yep, they certainly have. But you've got to remember, GX Tiger, they are the team that beat the Queen Walkers. It's not like the Queen Walkers lost to somebody else. They've moved up, down through the lower bracket and to this stage, it was oh. JX Tiger they lost to. And here we go. It is Vic. <laughs> it's the Pekka Smash and it is the Box Base. Take it away, Itsu. It is so cool to see now that the JX Tiger team has to go up against the Box Bases, which Queen Walkers surprisingly did not use against them earlier today. If they were afraid of them maybe knowing the secret how to attack those bases, we are going to see that now in those attacks. And JX Tiger is coming in with their special ability, which are those Pekka Smash attacks. They are so good at that. And they are starting things off from the complete other side of the base. And I think we have seen a similar attack already earlier on those sort of bases, which did not go well for Kronos. It didn't, but let's just set the scene here because Vic is an attacker who likes to push in Legends League himself. He actually finished in the top 10 of Legend League once season, which that is super impressive. I don't think people realize how impressive that is. It's basically right now we have the 10 top players in the world battling it out. But you see the funnel is set pretty good up to that northern side with the Barbarian King. Log Launcher hoping to get all of the way through. And unlike the attack that you referenced earlier, this one looks to be going a lot better in soon. Yeah, that's right. He's now predicting everything, especially those healers. They are getting targeted by the air defense, but there is no chance of them getting taken down because those super wizards coming in clutch. Take a look at this lock launcher, opening up everything. And now the road from the bottom side. Everything is ending on this town hall. This town hall, if it drops, it's going to be a three star. But the question is, can he push that far? Can he get through? We've got the king to one multi-target inferno. At the same time, the royal Looking champion good. takes down the multi on the other side. Look at the four of troops moving to the town hall and there's not a lot else left here into the town hall is the major threat it is down we've literally got a couple of arch towers royal champion ability come on Vic you can start to celebrate my friend you have done this three stars for JX Tiger exactly what they needed to do to kick off this war Vic uh, MVP worthy performance so far in oh, this yeah. event incredible and I mean, Queen Walkers, they were right. They were right to not use those box bases versus JX Tiger earlier. And this is giving me not that much faith into Queen Walkers because they are, they have used three box bases and so far they have defended incredible. 
but this time already the first box base is falling and not even falling it's just getting completely obliterated there was nothing left and it felt like all of those troops were still alive pushing through only the town of poison at the end but like okay i will make it look fair okay i will take <laughs> down a couple of those troops that is not looking that devastating but really incredible attack right there and maybe that's the secret to approach those box bases Yep, I will be looking to replicate that attack just like I did with the Pekka Smash Challenge. Like I said, it is important to note here, though, that Vic is a Legend League pusher, so he'll be familiar with that. But also, what do Queen Walkers do here, Itsu? They threw up different bases before. It didn't work, so they kind of need to throw up the box bases to give themselves some type of opportunity. I feel they had to make this play. Yeah, they had to do it, but the yeah, I mean... You ask what they have to do. I mean, the easy qu easy answer is three-starring. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if Sadra can make this work and can somehow not get the, got the Queen Walker team in pressure, like in a pressure situation again, because they know they lost already to Jake Tiger earlier. If they're falling behind early, I think this could go really wrong, really quick, really wrong. So they need to make sure that they're staying close or even getting a lead somehow as quick as long as possible. And we have the Super, which is coming in, which so far were really successfully used from Tribe Gaming Eve Jack. Question now is, are they working as well for Stadra? Stadra used them once in the opening war for Queen Walkers. He did only get the 92% two star, and he's only had one three star this entire weekend. Come on, Stadra, you can do this, my friend. He's got one of the Super Witches to the outside of the base here, which is interesting that you picked up on that with the attacks from Evejack. But oh. look at all the red air bombs there, Itsu, clearly thinking that there was some sort of charge into this bottom area. That's right, and so far he has not deployed those regular witches yet. And as we said, this might be right now the best move to go with those super witches making... Oh, wait a second, the queen! The queen is going the wrong direction. Is she going for a wall? Please, no, sir. No way! She's going for a wall, which means this ro uh, entire lock launcher is only opening up the wall for this double giant skeleton which is not getting that much value th so things are not looking that great right now for Stadra. Where do they go? Where do they go? Push He's it got back. multi, the clan castle and I think she goes left here Itsu. There's no way she moves back across and the super witches you can see are underneath the healers. Uses the jump just in time to oh, redirect the, the queen but the super witches are still stuck on the wall. Come on, move across there with the queen. No, Grand Warden. He's not really going to get this a little bit late on the jump spell, is he meaning the, the Super Witches are across. He's missing the Town Hall with that freeze and now turning the Inferno Tower invisible. Things are looking really not that good, but he has the Queen ability to save that second star at least. The Warden ability now got meanwhile used for those Super Witches. The Royal Champion coming from the top side. Maybe this is Maybe. going to turn out great still. The Royal Champion now facing off against those Ground Skeleton Traps. Yeah, like, there's still the Royal Champion ability left. Maybe, maybe. She, oh, she's, oh, the Giga Poison went as soon as she stepped into that region. Tornado Trap is there. Super Witches are fine down to the bottom area of the base, but I do worry. Look at the cannon on the right side of the base. It's 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. It's not going to be enough in terms of time. You can see it in his face. Oh, what an unfortunate turn of events there in the middle of the attack. Maybe could have adapted with that jump spell a little bit earlier, redirected everything, would have been the player. He's going to get up to 90% or at least close to it. Queen Walkers, though, trail after the first attack. JX Tiger, let's remember, they only need to win one war in the grand final, and they are our 2021 world champions. And this so far is looking great for them. I mean, they're going into this match with confidence. They have won the last match in the upper bracket versus the Queen Walkers, and they're starting off only after the first one attack each already with a lead. And this attack on the box base from Queen Walkers, which have done so far so incredible on defense, just got wrecked right there. So the question is, can his teammates, can the teammates from Vic replicate his approach and get that to work as well? If they can do, it's not looking that great for Queen Walkers, but this match just has started, so nothing is over yet. <laughs> I have to say as well, in the war earlier with JX Tiger, not only were their defenses super powerful, as we've mentioned, they actually stepped it up massively on offense, not only getting the stars, but also when you look at the attacks, 
you can see that they had skill, confidence, they had everything, and that is how they beat the Queen Walkers. It wasn't just the bases, they put the stars up as well. Remember, 14 stars is what they put on the board. But here we go, lightning spells early on in the middle of the base. It's, a, it's again one of those box-style bases. Queen Walkers basically throwing everything at it with those. Yeah, remember this base has done incredible versus Nibrax from Tribe. Really, really good defense right there. And it seems like he has changed a couple of traps. I don't remember to have those tests in front of the town or the last time. But can his queen take down the town? I think this is where the queen is supposed to go. But with all of those storages, with all of those hit points in front of the town hall, I don't know if that's looking so good. But let's see. It's no smash attack on the ring base. So they're switching things up and adapting on how those box bases are getting set up. With the Lava Loon, you've got to be very careful with them as well. Hence the lightning spells in the center. Now, I do like that the Barbarian King has busted through into this scattershot compartment. And if that goes down early on, which it looks like it, that is a huge advantage, wow. not only in terms of damage, but in terms of pathing for this Lalo as well. Just looks a lot cleaner. This looks really good for Jake's Tiger. We have now the Lalo coming in from the top left side. He's pushing in from the bottom side already as well. He has still the Slammer left to deploy. But remember, the last time they used this base, the Red Mines were on the bottom right side around the scatter. The question now is, did they change this up? Otherwise, he has to save the Warden ability for this area of the base. There and there's the Red Bomb and the perfect Warden ability. Reaction times in order to make sure that none of those red air bombs matter. Queen Walker's trying to switch things up here, not quite working out. And look at all of those balloons, it's you. The Stone Slammer hasn't even popped yet. And he's got the balloons on the right hand side in order to make sure that this main group of balloons just keeps condensed on the defenses in the middle. Oh my word, look at all of those balloons. Wow. JX Tiger showing their strength. Seeing those attacks, you're like, why did those bases defend so good so far? I mean, Jake Tiger makes things look easy. 50 yep. seconds left. He has more loons left than he started with. He, the Dragon Riders came out of nowhere. The Slammer, but still incredible attack so far from Jake Tiger. And Queen Walkers really need to step things up on offense. Defense, we can see it. The defense this time cannot carry them. Now it's all about their offense and making sure that they're doing the magic, what they are famous for in the community, why everyone in the community loves them. And th they have to show it now. They do, they need to be creative and just knock the bases out of the park. King Ren actually attacks 30 to 50 times per day, he told us. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is Legend League attacks, potentially on multiple accounts. So again, you can see why he would be able to just rip apart the box style base like this. And it puts a massive amount of pressure on Queen Walkers now. I mean, this is the grand final. Not only do they need to win this war, but the next, they trail. JX Tiger keep their foot on the gas. They get another three star. Queen Walkers, they've got to three star. Otherwise, it starts getting out of control. Yeah, it is really impressive, especially like how clean those JX Tiger attacks look like. Really, really good execution. And now it's on Stars. Stars is in. And this kind of looks like a box base as well. Did they? They did not use this base so far, I'm pretty sure. No. And I, it's kind of legend style looking. So I'm surprised yep. that they're throwing up this base against Queen Walkers. Is this a bait? I mean, a lot of those Queen Walker guys are having a YouTube channel. By the way, you should definitely check them out. And they're uploading their legend attacks, which might be a bad thing. And maybe Jake Tiger knows a couple of approaches through that. Who knows? Either way, Stars is coming in with a Blizzard Lalo. His legend style attack. And there's the Blizzard. And he's even bringing in his spell to the party. He is. He's got the Super Wizards exactly where he wants, continuing to turn them invisible. They're locked on the Royal Champion. Down she goes alongside the multi-target Inferno. So, so far, so good for start. Look at the obliteration on the Clan Castle troops there. Fantastic stuff. And like you said, I think this is an interesting tactic from JX Tiger because stars I mean, he pushes on multiple accounts in Legends League. This is what he does. This is his bread and butter for Clash of Clans. So maybe we have a trick up our sleeve from JX Tiger. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And right now he's pushing with his heroes into four ground expos. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. That's indeed a lot of damage which he has to take through. But at the same time, if he's getting this Royal Champion into this core, 
This is looking crazy. Two sweepers, multi phone towers, scatter shots, and he can still turn that Royal Gym invisible. So maybe that's looking good. And there's this Royal Gym I was talking about. Direct into the middle. Perfect pathing with the Expos tanked on the King over there. Royal Champion can just slot into the middle of the base to take that out, not waiting for the Lava Loon. Wants that Eagle Artillery down as fast as possible. Knows he's got the Queen ability. Town Hall is about to fall. Early Grand Warden ability means the Balloons are protected as he deploys them in a couple of groups. There's the Red Air Bomb Zitsu with the Lava Hound carrying all of them. Knows now the Balloons are not going to hit that and look at all of the spells he has left over. Wow, okay, we can we can pause this right here because apparently it was not a good idea to use those no. legend bases against Queen Walkers. Jake's Tiger not really, yeah, working or like having success with their, I would call it maybe mind games yep. because Stars is just smashing this base. There is no second base for the second day for this base anymore. And I think it's going to be deleted kind of quick. <laughs> <laughs> yep, right after this, it is history. There we go, three stars from the Queen Walkers. What we are used to seeing, we're not used to seeing them struggle to this degree, but they do still trail to JX Tiger. They got a high percentage two star, so they've got to make sure that they take that into account. Any defense, it's likely that it could be below that, and then they'd be right in position to take the lead again. Yeah, that's right. Especially like when we're based on hit rates, where like we have to go for those stats, then we know that kind of like the worst attacker from JX Tiger is still to attack, or like let's say with the worst hit rate out of yes. this team, which is crazy, crazy high. Where like um, the attacker Jones having like around 35%-ish hit rate, which is not as high as his teammates, especially Vic, who is at 100%. So if you compare that, maybe there is still the chance of a fail then for Queen Walkers. So let's see if they can keep showing up, because this is like the crazy thing about JX Tiger, which is impresses, like, which impresses me so much. The players, which are having supposed to have the worst hit rate, are showing up non-stop for JX Tiger. And we have the new player on the board and a really wild looking base. If you're needing any new legend bases, guys, out there, then this war is yours. Those bases look all ready for legends. So let's see what we're seeing next. Oh, this can always be dangerous. He's got the Hydra moving in. Stone Slammer selected, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's ready. Yeah, there we go to swap that out to the Battle Blimp. Does actually use the Warden ability nice and early here. So maybe just having it there is a bit of a backup plan. Nicely pushing the Dragons through and a delayed Battle Blimp means it should easily get through to that area. And even if there's any traps in front of the Town Hall, it's still going to get there. Yeah, that's right, but the Nader Trap is delaying things, so the Town of Poison is not going to run out as quick as you would like to see. But right now, those heroes were taking all of those Expos out with his Dragons and Dragon Riders. There's not too much damage left for those heroes to be taken down, which means the Royal Champion can be still sending. There is no heroes left. Where is the base? <laughs> He's not even deployed the Royal Champion yet, Itsu. The King ability left over, Queen wow. ability. I think he could have probably swagged that Royal Champion. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the celebration showing you the JX Tiger logo. He knows this puts them in a fantastic position. Three attacks. It will be three three stars for JX Tiger. Two more attacks, Itsu. That is all it will take to crown them as world champions because if they continue three starring, Queen War cannot catch up. Wow, they're throwing so many different strategies at those bases. We have the Royal Champion finishing off this base in style. Poison not used, Queen Ability not used, and the King has won so many barbarians leading the charge. And yeah, like this is impressive. This is really impressive so far from Jake's Tiger. Like, not only they're the team with the best defense so far, I mean, they completely defended Tribe game, which other than that had a lot of perfect wars. Yeah. They defended Queen Walkers already earlier today on a really, really solid start. And at the same time, it feels like they're one of the best offensive teams as well. So this is making this team incredible scary. And especially mindset-wise, like what is the mindset looking like right now for Queen Walkers? Which, like they know they already lost to them, but at yeah. the same time, like they have to stay in this even though they're behind. Yeah, they need to keep, I mean, just try, what time. can you do? What can you do <laughs> against this JX Tiger team? Also want to point out the victory over Bad Zynga as well, who obviously ended up being fourth in this tournament. So they defended 
them very well. And it shows the defensive power of JX Tiger. But as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Itsu, their offense has really oh, wow. stepped up this today. And their attacks are so skillful. But what, what perks your curiosity here? We're seeing a completely crazy armor. We see the Queen Charge with Sneaky Goblins and that combined with Inferno Dragons and Dragon Riders, this army is crazy looking for Gaku. Really, really hoping that he can make this work because it looks just so cool. I love it when those players get like out of the default armies, right? Everyone has seen Packer Smash. Everyone has seen already the regular armies. But no, like this strategy looks super cool. Right now, even he has a what a. Uh, a ram selected, right? Like, we don't see this, this siege machine too often, so I'm really looking forward to see what exactly he has in store for us with this approach. Can you remember what I said Gaku told us prior to this tournament <laughs> in that last War Games Tribe? He said, do not select difficult plans. Well, <laughs> yeah, take your own advice, Gaku. What on earth is this? <laughs> Sneaky Goblins now in towards the town hall. There's some oh. more bombs, but oh, the invisibility will be able to protect the Sneaky Goblins. And with the town hall down, he knows he doesn't have to worry and also pops the tornado trap there into, which is a huge bonus. That's right, looting out the clan castle as well. This is looking incredible for Gaku right now. We have that queen charging for it, already dealing with that king nicely. And now the question is, is he just sending those um, Inferno Dragons with the Dragon Rise into the core? Or is he using the ramp like the Wall Wrecker? Yeah, it's like or the Eagle? Maybe he's changing things up. I mean, he can still like change the Siege Machine, right? Maybe he charges in and gets the queen in towards the multi somehow from some sort of weird angle, but let's find out what he's got because the Inferno Dragons do move in from that right-hand side with the Dragon Riders. Like you said, Giga Poison already gone, so he doesn't have to worry about it. There's the wall record from the left-hand side, so it could give access in towards that multi-target Inferno, but also towards the Eagle Artillery and the enemy queen. He needs to be careful with his own queen. The queen is running low, especially because the defending queen is close. He needs to freeze. He needs to freeze. No, no. Oh. It's too late. The queen is going down. The war is opening exactly what he was hoping for. So it's really unfortunate that this queen is going down. Can those Inferno Dragons and Dragon Riders carry this? It's not looking too good, Judo. Oh, and he had balloons and a Dragon Rider inside the wall record, but it didn't get close enough to the multi. Fortunately, Grand Warden is there to take that out. But the Royal Champion still has an invisibility and the rage spell. Turns the RC invisible, but she goes down it, Sue. From bad to worse, is it enough? The smiles on his face. He uh is still going to be able to use that rage spell. 20 seconds, he is smiling, he looks confident. And remember, he's a couple of seconds ahead of us in this attack. Yeah, I mean, I guess he just wants to make things interesting, right? But this attack <laughs> was incredible. Gaku did not took his own advice and is going with a simple approach. Instead, he's coming up with the War Raker, Queen Shore, Sneaky Goblin, Inferno Dragon, Dragon Rider strategy. I think that's a pretty long strategy name. Yeah, I think he listed just about every troop there, Ritsu. I mean, it's in their nature, it's in their blood. They have to be creative, that's why we love them. And getting into the groove, I would say, with the, that attack, maybe just realizing, hey, we need to just shake off the pressure, do what we need to do, and, you know, hope for a defense. Because at the end of the day, we can repeat it. Queen Walkers can three-star all they want. They already had a two-star, so JX Tiger can triple out and win that trophy behind us. Yeah, but that is easier said than done. Even though, yes, it's still JX Tiger, they're still really good, but still, for us, it's easier said than done. Just three-star and win. Well, if that would have been that easy i think a lot of more teams would have been like that right yeah I so mean, i'd be in here right <laughs> <laughs> anyone would be in here everyone would just play in this world's finals but now we have joan and i said he is having one of the lowest hit rates for jx tigers so him three storing would be so so important and so far all of those players which don't have the highest hit rates for jx tiger were showing up and this is one of those deadly box bases which have incredible success for queen walkers so far can they make that work against Jake's Tiger as well? Yep, they've had three wars this weekend, and he's only three-starred once, which was with a Hydra-style attack. Now, with the Lightning Spells in the center, he did take down the multi-target Inferno. You can see the Tesla popped, so they are going to be repaired back up and could mess the balloon pathing just a little bit. Has two poison spells so up at that top area, and time ticking down a little bit here. However, with the Lava Loon attack, 
it tends to be a little bit more forgiving than some of the other strategies we see. I always have to smile when I see this golden um, king skin. Like, <laughs> it's so huge. Like, I don't know, it's twice as big as the queen. And now all of those heroes are pushing towards that town hall compartment, trying to take down the Expos, the Inferno Tower, and the town hall itself to make sure that this push towards the left side, towards the eagle side, is working. But Judo, he has five headhunters, depending off the spring traps. He needs to take down Queen, Roy Champion, and King with those. It's not going to be easy. It's not. Hence why he's took so many. I do love the funnel that was set up so the heroes went to the town hall. And you can notice the tornado trap also popped over there. So he knows, doesn't have to worry about that with the lava hounds and balloons. There go the, the headhunters actually popped a spring trap, but they were able to run past it, Itsu, which is huge for this attack. Royal Champion goes down. I think the headhunters are gone. I think he has one, one headhunter left. left to deploy, but this ground expo is giving him a lot of problems. Just those heroes. The queen is going down. The Roy champion is going to the core, which means any red bombs are not getting triggered. And now it's all about the back and the scatter shot. Can the scatter shot go onto the Roy champion? That, that would be huge. The Roy champion is tanking. The loons are closing, and there is the freeze. Black mine, but I think it's looking good again. I think this looks very good. He's got a couple of troops for cleanup. 40 seconds, lots of balloons, no splash damage, and the Royal Champion is underneath those balloons as well, just <laughs> battering away at the defenses. JX Tiger not giving Queen Walkers any opportunity to catch up now. And we keep counting down the attacks. Just one more for them now. It's 20 seconds. Balloons move across. They should be able to get to that clan castle pretty easily. Oh, oh there's all the red air bombs with the skellies. But with 10 seconds, minions move across. Oh my word, it would keep them ahead of the Queen Walkers on percentage. But it is the three star. They're not giving the Queen Walkers any opportunity. One more three star from JX Tiger is all that it takes for that beautiful trophy. This is incredible performance from the entire team. Every player is showing up. This is the streak good. Like it's not about one or two carries have, nope. like showing up at the World's Finals. No, you need those 13, 14, even 15 stars to get to the next round to win this World Championship. And so far, that's exactly happening for JX Tiger. Every single team member is showing off. And you can see hit rate, 53%, showing up when it matters, yep. getting this three star and giving Queen Walkers no chance of coming back, at least for now. Remember, they have not been in this position. They've not got to any final. They showed up to one of our qualifiers back in August, our fourth, and they got the job done there. Seemingly no pressure. They made it through the upper bracket. I remember it clearly because nobody seemingly touched them back then. And I guess everyone just you know, forgot about them in terms of their prediction. They weren't at the top of anybody's list. But we've got the main man himself. Man, myth, legend, Klaus it is. Can he keep them in this? That's the big question. There is the Blizzard coming in to take down the Scatter, the Queen, and even luring out this clan castle. But the Queen so far is hiding in that invisibility spell. Can you still take her down? But so far it seems like the Queen is sneaking away. She is with the Super Wizards down. Queen will survive. He's lured the Ice Golems, which is something you always want to do, luring the Clan Castle with the Blizzard. He's got the pathing set up pretty nicely in that area. And I guess the good thing is the Battle Builders can't repair the Queen. So one <laughs> quick shot and she will be down. I mean, that would be an uh, interesting mechanic oh, right there. Please. I mean, making the heroes more powerful on defense. But either way, he is right now dealing with those Ice Golems with his own King Golem. And well, now he has to maybe push towards the town hall. He has having two wall breaks, which means he can wall break even further into the Singham Fern Tower compartment. The question though is, is he having enough power? The Queen so far is under quite some fire, but the Unicorn is keeping her alive and on, in good shape. Yep, Baby Dragon to funnel up top. He's deployed the Ice Golem. Still has one Super Wall Breaker in order to try and get him pathing through. And notice those two Rocket Loons as well. I wonder if he's going to send something to that Archer Tower just to snipe that off on the outside of the base. There is the Super Wall Breaker. Gives him access to the single. Notice wow. the King ability used early to spawn the Barbarians. Exactly what I said earlier on in the live stream. Gets him through the single and he is dialed in for that Town Hall with now the main phase of the army. It's 6 o'clock. 
This is looking so good. The biggest one right now, I guess, would be the defending Roy Champion because he has to get his headhunters on the correct angle. So far, he used already a couple of them to take down the King and the defending Queen. The native trip is getting triggered, but the Warning Lich is so far is keeping everything safe. Everything is relying on this back end. Air defense, expo, scatter shot is up. And this defending Roy Champion is keep shooting. He's got three free spells. There is the first for the defending champion. She goes down. Rage spell to help him through that ex uh, air defense. Oh, the expo in the center survives. Good call there, Itsu. With the final freeze now used, he's got Dragon Riders and the Royal Champion. Does he have enough time? It does look good here for Klaus. That's right. 24 seconds roundabout left. The minions on the right side are working. It would be huge if the Royal Champion could sail up, but the Royal Champion oh, is going down and time is ticking. 15 seconds. Klaus needs that three star to keep Queen Walkers oh. in this match, and we see already his reaction. He's not really looking happy with this elixir storage staying up, and he knows, he knows this is not looking good. Jake Tiger so far not have shown any possibility of a one star and this is exactly what Queen Walkers would need to have the chance of a comeback in this match. They are not showing any weakness. Offensively, super strong. Defensively, holding back the Queen Walkers, not just in the first war today, but again here. Queen Walkers feeling against multiple bases and this is it. JX Tiger, World Championship on the line. The safe two star gets him it. Does he go for the perfect Waritsu to really close out this grand final in style? I think at this point they're going the safe route. Like, <laughs> I don't think they're going to risk. 1,000 on the line? I mean, why not? Sure, <laughs> you, you can go for it. I don't think they're going to go for it. They're going to try to go for this high percentage two star or maybe just risking it all. But we know that only two star with good, decent percentage is already enough. And that would rely on Queen Walkers getting the three star as well. And with the bases of JX Tiger, it's not an easy task, but here we go. I said at the start of this war, it's five attacks for JX Tiger. They have blitzed through four of them, just one remain. They are in the upper bracket. This will win them it. And it is the Queen Charge Dragon Rider from Mock. He is perfect so far. He has used this strategy twice throughout the tournament. Three start with it twice. And here we go. This is the championship winning attack. It is indeed against one of those box bases. If a base can maybe save Queen Walkers, it has to be one of their box bases. Clan Castle is loot, but the entire compartment is getting taken down with this one expo staying up. But that's where the Queen Shorts is coming in to finish off the job. First off, though, he has to deal with that Clan Castle while the Baby Dragon at the bottom side is doing a great job of really making sure that this Queen is not going into the wrong direction. This will be the worst possible scenario. Making sure that she goes exactly where he wants. Does he just send the king into that town hall, get it down and make sure he gets a 50%? I mean, he is closing in on 20%, so another 30, and that would be it. Here we go. King is going to be used on that side with the sneaky goblins to take down the storages. We can almost guarantee that town hall. Percentage is racking up. It's looking good for JX Tiger, but he's keeping his cool. Balloon used in front of the healers, now engaging the enemy queen, but still, managing to hold this attack with everything on the line. Needs to be careful though, there is the Baby Dragon coming in for the Expo, the all defending down. King as well, the tunnel's going down, you said it, and now it's all about the percentage. The King is really threatening that Queen, but with that Queen ability, she is staying alive. The Dragon Rush are coming from the right side, and he's closing in on those two stars. He needs 5%, oh, there we go, Itsu, 49, surely, 50% GX Tiger are your newly crowned world champions, but can they do it with a perfect war? Dragon Riders flying through the right hand side of the base. Royal Champion taking out that multi. This is class at its best from GX Tiger. This base is history. Yes, it is. The Dragon Rise are closing in. Even the tank giant at the top left, making sure the Queen is staying alive a little bit longer. But wait a second, this air defense is trying to somehow save the third star. The Dragon Riders, though, they're coming in and getting it down. And no. yes, 
there is no better way than winning a world championship than with the perfect war. This is just true showcase of skill and power from Jake's Tiger. The only team to get a perfect war alongside Tribe Gaming, and they held it for the main event. Grand Finals, perfect war. This is what we like to see. JX Tiger have snatched the trophy despite all odds, and they can take a bow. They can celebrate perfect war. What more is there to say? Smiles all around, and so they should. Yes, well, I feel like Mark not really is sure if they actually won. He's actually thinking about, <laughs> but yeah, like his teammates are there to celebrate. What an incredible match that was, like that was from JX Tiger. Offense, defense, they had everything through this entire week and through all of those matches. And this is just so impressive. I mean, defending one team, yeah, defending two teams, okay. Defending Queen Walkers as well. What is going on? What is going on? There's those post attacks. He even looks fierce in his <laughs> picture, ready to pounce and three-star your base. Beautiful job. I don't think there's any more, anything more to say about GX Tiger. They've been so impressive. There you go, my friends. Take that trophy home. But let's close out with the Queen Walkers. They've been super impressive themselves. We can't shadow that fact. Getting second for another year on the bounce. That is consistency from this team. But let's see what Utica 14 can do. Can he close out with a three star for the Queen Walkers? Yeah, that's the question, but I don't know if they like this consistency. I'm I, oh, I think yeah. they would have liked to step things up, but either way, Utah coming in with one of his special strategies, special power, if you want to call it, which is this Queen Charge Lalo. He's so, so good at We have seen records from him where he, like, Queen Charge Lalo base, or, like, the Lalo power was more like 30 seconds where, like, people <laughs> are already calling the time fell, but he was completely cool. But wait a second, I think this attack is not going to plan, but maybe he can just, like, flip the three star out of his head. Well, he's learned how to be flexible from his teammates, so now is the time for it to show off because we know the Queen Orcas do like to show off. That's why we love them so much. But where's this Queen going, though, Itsu? Oh, my word. She is on a mission to the outside of the base, I think. Or does she reroute back to the expo here? Yep, I think she might. Nope. <laughs> I think that's actually good for him because he had no chance of wall breaking into the single fern tower. And with this route, the queen is not in range of that. So this might be actually a good thing, especially because he's directing right now and trying to push that queen now from a different angle into the tower compartment, which looks way better because the single fern tower is not threatening his queen right now. The question though is, can he flip everything which he has planned around? Because we know the queen charge was supposed to go towards the eagle. He already invested the king, the tower now is going down down, but the Eagle should be activated soon. We all know if the Eagle is locking onto the, onto the healers, this is really bad news for him. It is indeed deadly, and I want to point out the time. You mentioned Uda 14 can get the attacks done fast, but he has had to invest not just troops here, but the time for the Queen charge. We're getting down to a final minute. Can he still pull this off with the Clan Castle troops now engaging? Single is locked on. He's Whoa. going to have to use another freeze here, Itsu. You've got to say he is handling this incredibly well, but the Lalo has to start. We're into the final minute. That's right, he's coming with the Royal Gem from this power right side, but the Royal Gem is not getting the value which he needs. The Headhunters are coming too late. Oh. There is another freeze. He's doing a lot of multitasking right now. The question though is with those red bombs coming up and no ward ability left, I don't think this is going to be enough. Even more red bombs are hitting, and this means all of those loons are gone. He's trying his best. Look at how quick he is with his fingers as well to try and get this attack back on track, but it's not going to be enough. At least the silver lining here, Itsu, is that no matter what Uta 14 did, it wouldn't have been enough. If this was required to be a three star, he might have felt this a lot more. But the Queen Walkers take second place in the 2021 World Championships. He's managed to spin this attack round in incredibly well. They are the second best team in the world. But do you know who is best? It is JX Tiger. There they are, your 2021 world champions for Clash of Clans. What an impressive performance, holding back 
Queen Walkers not once to 12 stars, but twice, beating every single team in this competition without losing once. JX Tiger being the new world champion. There they are with the beautiful arena fireworks around the trophy and they can now smile and celebrate the golden look overpowers the arena as JX Tiger are crowned our new world champions here, Itsu. They've been impressive from start to finish. It might have been a double elimination tournament, but that wasn't required for JX Tiger. Four wars, four wins, and a perfect war to round it up. This, this is Supercell HQ in Helsinki, Itsu. There we have it, the Clash of Clans logo for the World Championship. Let's and go. fireworks there as well. It's looking so cool with that firework, making sure everyone sees this new World Champion. World Champion JX Tiger on the Helsinki HQ. This is looking so cool. Look at that. They can celebrate in style. They'll be wanting to screenshot <laughs> this for sure. Lighting up the side of the Supercell building. That looks amazing. And the Chinese team can celebrate throughout the rest of the year because nobody can take this title away from them, Itsu. This is just truly powerful. We have seen JX Tiger the first time really on the big stage in the warm up of this year, in the early stage where everyone was being shocked by their performance. They were doing so great earlier then and since then, getting, coming once to the qualifier, qualifying and smashing everyone in this finals event. Take a look at those stats. We have even attack in under two minutes, one minute, 47 seconds. I mean, could it get even more dominant than this? It cannot. They have showed their strength. I remember casting that World's Warm-Up Tournament with you, Itsu. You called JX Tiger to be powerful this season. And that might have been the one prediction you did get right. <laughs> JX Tiger going all of the way. Wow, everybody can say they've been impressed by them. I don't know if I should be proud or like, <laughs> if I should go completely into the wrong direction. But yeah, you said it, JX Tiger showing off over the entire year with their skill. As well in the community leagues, really nicely done, showing what they can do. And especially in this, in this event, they're showing that if you have time to prepare, you can do so much. Even in the current meta with base building, I think every team, 12 stars was the highest which they have received, yeah. uh, received on defense. This is just incredible. Their base building team is just on a different level than anyone else. It really was, and they stepped it up offensively as well. True champions here, and they can take the trophy home being happy. I've got to say that this event, JX Tiger aside, has been incredible. This weekend of Clash of Clans has been next level, really showing the depth of the teams that we have here in the esports scene. And I want to congratulate every single one of them. Huge upsets all around and really shapes things up for the future, Itsu. That's right. It's going to be all mixed up again because, like, we had so many upsets. We had so many newcomers overall through this event. So I'm super excited for a breakdown because we're going to go to the Telestrator to see which attack is going to be breaking down. Yes, and we have a huge announcement after that, Itsu. But let's find out with Carbon Fit. Yes, absolutely. What a war we had. Congratulations to JX Tiger. And we're going to be breaking down an attack that came in from JX Tiger, which was Vic. And surprising enough, he did not miss a single attack this whole weekend. So what did he do? He took on this box base. Let's go ahead and play it here and break down the box bases that have stalled up so many teams in this tournament here. So this Warden is able to help grab this value right here. The big thing 
you want to take a notice is the jump spell initially. When Tribe Gaming took on the box bases from Queen Walkers, what happened was as the his troops went around, they went up and around, and that's that was really bad. Everything walked. But this jump spell now gives him access to directly step his way into the scatter shot and move towards this eagle artillery. And notice he's got himself a log launcher as well. So that log launcher is is going to be pushing all the way across the town hall even though the jump spell is even down because he wants to get everything through and watch this when does he pop the warden ability nice and early so that he can grab all this value and continue his way through well now how do you take out the multi-target inferno on the left well that is where he sends the king and wall breaks over there so you can see how everything is taken out well what about the multi-target on the bottom side well that is the royal champion's job so every single defense, the Inferno Towers have something to take down. The King takes down one. The Royal Champion takes down the other as the Pekka Smash takes down the whole core of this base. And beautifully, there's the Royal Champion. There's the King. They continue their way through and get all that value Add the jump spell as well to bust outside the back end of the wall. And then he was able to three star. Unbelievable. Vic, what a performance you put on here inside of the Clash of Clans World Championship. But now let's go ahead and toss it over to Judo Sloth, who will be having an interview with the new world champions. Thank you, Carbon. It is my pleasure to interview John of JX Tiger with kind assistance from a translator. Let's start out. You are the new world champions for Clash of Clans. How do you feel? Okay. Uh, he feels it's a very big encouragement for him and his team, and he they are gonna uh, uh, do the best in the next year and keep going. Absolutely, I'm sure that you will. You were strong with attacking and defense in the wars. What was your thoughts moving into that final matchup, knowing that the Queen Walkers are such a fan favorite and did get the prediction from pretty much everybody? Uh, 你们的对手是一个非常强大的队伍，你们是怎么想的？要跟他们呃进行竞争？那有没有之前对这个队伍做过一些什么了解呀？然后呃，我们对研究之类的。呃，我们对每个队伍都有研究，都有对进行数据的
he said it's uh, he uh, everyone needs to be more practiced and to watch uh, more great teams playing this game to learn more from the videos and experiences. Fantastic advice! Congratulations again for winning. Thank you so much for joining us. Any quick shout-outs you want to give as well before we close out here? 还有什么想要喊的话吗？呃，还想说想分享我们的喜悦给每一位关心和支持队伍发展的粉丝朋友们。我们将仍然坚持我们的初心，心如止水，宠辱不惊。我们很享受这样的比赛，谢谢大家。
the top eight teams from around the world. And JX Tiger with the pressure on. Get into the action. Absolutely stunning performance here. Badzinger taken down the reigning world champions. I love how the battle blimp takes down the town hall. The Yak is going to clutch what? this three star. You've got the three star and Badzinger will move on to tomorrow's matches. It's a three star. Stars hype indeed. JX Tiger will be advancing to the grand finals. Nebrax bringing it in for Drive Gaming. They are going to bring home the third three star here, Garvin. Exosys is making this look easy. It's getting pretty hot here in the studio, though, as there's only three teams left, and we have already seen some incredible wars so far. Three stars for Klaus. I can see a little bit of a smirk starting to be there on Unit 14's face. The Grand Finals have arrived! Come on, Vic, you can start to celebrate my thing. I think he could have probably swagged that Royal Champion. Yeah. Look at the <laughs> celebrations. This is history! The golden look overpowers the arena as JX Tiger are crowned our new world champions here, Itsu.